Good morning. Good morning. This is the New York City Board of Standards and Appeals Public Hearing for August 2nd, 2016. We'll begin with a special order calendar, decision items, item number 1 to 2004 BZ, 500 Briggs Avenue, Brooklyn. Good morning, everybody. Hilary Atzerath for applicant from Sheldon LaBelle, PC. Um, I just need a nod from fire department. Yeah. So, uh, for a motion to grant. Chair Perlmutter? Aye. Vice Chair Hinkson? Aye. Commissioner Montanez? Aye. Commissioner Adley Brown? Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. Item number two, continued hearing items, 548-69-BZ-10710, Astoria Boulevard, Queens. Good morning, Eugene Pillman on behalf of Eric Black and PC. We attended your review session yesterday and um, you inquired about the community board recommendation. I spoke with the attorney who attended the hearing and he is of the opinion that they did approve it, but we do not have the recommendation on file. We reached out to them um, uh, yesterday and again this morning, but they informed us that the, that the recommendations are not stored in an accessible manner, so they have to go and um, and pull it out of their record, so we will provide that at a later date. Okay. So in other words, you'll get it to us? Well, yes, we'll, we'll submit it at a later time. Okay. Um, as for the parking spot, the sixth parking spot that was added during the last submission, uh, you inquired whether the 12 foot uh, distance between the, the dispenser and the parking space is enough to allow maneuverability. I'd just like to point out that there's a curb cut on the southwest side of the, of the lot, right off Astoria Boulevard, and as vehicles enter that curb cut, they'll be able to drive straight into that parking space and then exit by proceeding um, towards the accessory building and turning left. And if that space is uh, occupied by a motor vehicle, they'll be able to enter that curb cut and drive between the dispensers towards the accessory building. And uh, we'll be happy to provide a maneuverability plan which shows how vehicles will be able to enter and exit this space or drive around that should it be occupied. What about time. if six is occupied but five is empty? Six is the one closest to the curb cut. Well, as I said, um, they'll be able to go between the two dispensers and uh, proceed towards the accessory building, which at which point they'll be able to access any of the other parking spaces. No, five is right in front of six. Tandem. Parallel parking to well, right. That's what I meant. They'll be able. They'll be able to drive between the dispensers towards the accessory building and possibly uh, back up into the space if six is occupied. I think he means between the two dispensers to the to the east yeah, right. of that curb cut. So the so question was, two. if somebody's getting gas at a dispenser, mm -hmm. and then six, the one closest to the curb cut is occupied, uh -huh. and someone drives up and they want to park in five, is there room for them to parallel the park? No, he's, I think he's saying that they won't park in five. No, I'm saying five will be accessible. They'll just drive around six between the dispensers and they'll be able to maneuver into five. And uh, what we'll do is we'll provide a turn radius that'll show that there's adequate room to, to maneuver the vehicle in that, in that space. That's all the word I would just assume kind of just Yeah, okay. Oh. Also, uh, about, the about the existing shed that's on the lot, we spoke with the operator and they would really like to keep the shed in its current location due to, due to the fact that it's elevated off the ground. Uh, there's a retaining wall there, and we've been informed that basically incorporating the shed into the, into the building would, uh, would incur a great expense, and it would not serve the needs of the facility because the shed is used <coughs> as, a, as a landscaping, it's used as a landscaping shed. There's uh, right breaks in there, tools. It's not, it's not items that would normally be stored in the building. <laughs> if you have a storage room, we're talking about rakes. I mean, you're not talking, I can't even imagine what needs to be stored in a shed, but it certainly wouldn't be rakes. If you have, but, uh, if you have access from the outside of the building where there's a door and you want to access it from the outside of the building and get garden tools, I mean, the whole point is that the shed is a temporary structure and you're going to the trouble of building this permanent structure that the storage should be included in the permanent structure. And, uh, and steps leading up and steps leading up to the shed also as part of this environment. But. Right, but the shed is a temporary structure. So it, it, the whole point is you're asking for approval for all of these things and the temporary structure 
it's, it's unsightly, it's temporary, it's flammable, all that stuff, and you're building an extension. If you weren't building an extension, it'd be another thing, but you're adding a lot of, you're adding space to the building. I don't understand why you would add space to the building and not include the storage in the space. Well, um, the, this is based on the request of the, of the operator, and um, we ask that you consider other alternatives, such as providing landscaping to screen the shed, or perhaps painting it in a different color. <laughs> it's a temporary structure. Which was, which was previously approved uh, by the board. So it was previously approved, and the board actually considered the location of the shed in the 2013 hearing. Previously approved before there was an extension being proposed to build an extension on the building, right? That was the existing structure where it was converted, right? Um, so you would have needed the temporary structure to do exactly what you're saying, but now that you are offering to extend the building, it doesn't really make sense to extend the building up to the shed and then continue to have the shed when you could have put on an additional, you know, five feet, had doors to the outside, and now you've got, you know, a nice uniform building with the same amount of space used for the same amount of stuff. It's just looks a lot better than having a sort of a dinky shed on and your we're corner. We're trying to clean up the look of the site. Right? We'll, we'll, we'll consult with the operator um, and revise the plans accordingly based on your comments. Okay. Um, there was another comment about landscaping at the site. Mm -hmm. um, the trees are not to mention, but the, the roots are six to seven feet apart, and the foliage when the trees are fully grown is about two to three feet apart on the west side of the lot. So we'd be happy to provide more landscaping um, to more densely plant it and to dimension and to dimension everything on the plans. So the issue is, you know, when you give instruction about how to plant, you say six feet on center, or ten feet on center, and that's how they decide how to plant the, the, the shrubs, the trees, whatever. And then and that's based on what the anticipated tree spread is. Right. So um, that needs to be indicated on the plans and if what was confusing is it's all the same tree, but the spacing is all different in the way it's depicted graphically. So I don't really get that. Why are they all spaced differently? They should be spaced in a way that makes sense for the ultimate growth. And the, the goal is screening, right? So buffering, screening, so they should be planted with the same kind of, on center dimensions, if it's the same kind of a tree. Well, the, the spacing reflects uh, existing conditions at the site. In particular, the west side is less densely planted than the south side. But we're gonna we're gonna revise it so that there's a nice uniform uh, yes. buffer without spacing all across the perimeter. But so the that so one of the comments the last time was that there are parts that are too sparsely planted. They need to be filled in. So if it's an existing condition, then you need to fill in the openings to make it a dense buffer. Okay, we'll we'll be able we'll be able to address that. And um, there was another comment about the fencing, six foot uniform fence with slats all around, and we'd be happy to, um, to provide that as part of the proposal. Okay, so you'll show it, it has to be shown in the drawings that you're gonna do that. Because yes. the whole idea for this is that the drawings are gonna show what you're intending to do prior to us voting, right? Because this, this is gonna be, this is work is gonna be done now except for the extension, right? The landscaping, the fencing, I guess the striping also can be done now. It's just to the extent that you're going to be um, digging stuff up where you can do that work. So let us know which ones, you know, what's going to be, where the disrupting construction areas are where you can't make the corrections. That would be... I believe perimeter work with fencing and planting will not in any way interfere with construction. Okay. Good. All right. Um, any other comments? Okay. Are there any speakers on this? Okay. So we need to see another set of drawings um, with all of those corrections made. And, and you wanted the landscaping and fencing done now? Well, we want to see the drawings okay. that indicate what you're doing. Then we can say, yes, go. And then we want that work done now, the landscaping and the fencing. And the striping, if possible. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, what are you, you're going to need a few weeks to do the drawings. 
I believe about four weeks to submit would be what okay, so that works. So then um, you could come for you could submit on August thirty first, say, for a September twentieth hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Item number three, one seventy three ninety two BZ two twenty East eighty six Street, Manhattan. Okay, I believe they wanted to adjourn this till mid to September um, because we're waiting for fire department inspection. Does that sound right? Yeah, okay. <coughs> so again, I guess the 13th is full, right? Yeah, okay, so September 20th for the continuation or, yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Item number four. Or actually with that one, it doesn't matter if they get the sign off on the oh. on the 19th. That's fine. Okay. Item number four, 30-00 BC, 465, 469 West 165th Street, and 458 to 464 West 166th Street. In they asked to adjourn this by a lot of days, um, by 70 days. So um, that would mean a submission on 9:21 for. A continued hearing on October 14th. Yeah. Which is a Friday. Which is a Friday, All right? New cases. Item number five, four dash nine five BC twenty one twenty three Hillside Avenue, Manhattan. Second call. Second call. Step out. Oh, we stepped out. Hmm? Call. He's here, but he stepped out. He stepped out of the room. Yeah. Come on, come on. 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 No, well, okay. Sorry, Cole. <laughs> <laughs> Appeals calendar, decision items, item number 6, 24415A, 677 Fifth Avenue, Manhattan. Okay, I believe the Department of Buildings wanted to make a presentation. To oh, I need to reopen. reopen, yeah, yeah. Okay, so a motion to reopen. Chair Perlwater? Aye. Vice Chair Hinkson? Aye. Commissioner Montanez? Aye. Michelle Shopping Brown? Aye. Good morning, Kurt Steinhaus for the New York City Department of Buildings. Under the Supreme Court and Appellate Division's decisions in Van Wagner Communications, LLC versus Board of Standards and Appeals, overturning the board's resolution in 111 Barrack Street and the board's resolution in 332 West 44th Street, the video wall is assigned because it directs attention to the retail store in which it is located. The courts in Van Wagner held that a plywood billboard with paint colors that eroded and weathered over time with an artist's signature that was not visible for approximately seven years is a sign that directs attention to an off-site artist and therefore meets the zoning sign definition and was an advertising sign. Even if the court's decisions are overturned and the board's Barrick Street resolution reinstated, the board's decision in Barrick is not inconsistent with the department's position that the video wall is a sign in that the facts in that case are easily distinguishable from this appeal and fully supports the department's position that the Microsoft video wall is assigned under zoning, as I will explain. As you'll recall, in 111 Barrick Street, Manhattan, <coughs> calendar number 9012A, the board upheld the department's determination that painted plywood insulation was not an advertising sign. The board found the following facts. Between 1979 and 1989, an art installation appeared on a large plywood billboard space on the southern wall of the building near the Holland Tunnel. An affidavit from the building owner indicated that the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council leased the space on behalf of Mr. Fugate Wilcox during the entirety of the installation. Mr. Fugate Wilcox was an artist by profession. After having the space on the plywood billboard secured and after receiving donated paint, Mr. Fugate Wilcox arranged for rigors of the Apollo Painting Company to paint the plywood in different colored, incompatible layers. As the painted plywood weathered, different colors emerged in natural patterns. 
1981, the New York Times described the installation as sheets of plywood painted yellow covering the facade and noted that Mr. Fugate Wilcox felt that time and weather will give the display aesthetic appeal. The artist's signature appeared in small lettering but was not visible for approximately seven years from 1982 to 1989. After the plywood billboard structure had to be dismantled, Mr. Fugate Wilcox reconceived the dismantled pieces of plywood as original works of visual art. The board found that the installation did not have a reasonable nexus between the sign and the business, profession, commodity, service, or entertainment conducted or sold or offered off-site. The board determined that the subject installation of plywood and layers of weathering paint was not an advertising sign. Unlike the Varick Street installation, which appeared on billboard space leased separate and apart from any on-site commercial endeavor, the video wall is located inside the retail store to which it directs attention. The appellant has al also already conceded that the video wall is akin to a store merchandise display, which is a form of advertising that by its very nature is designed to direct customers' attention to the store. The Van Wagner court decisions overturning the board's Barrick Street resolution, as they now stand, take a broad interpretation of the sign definition and leave little room for the board to define that the video wall is not a sign. Contrary to the board's factual findings, the Supreme Court of the State of New York held that this weathered plywood billboard, with no words and no visible connection to any off-site commercial endeavor, was an advertising sign under 1210. In support of its holding that the installation directed attention to the off-site artist, the Supreme Court stated, there's no question, and both sides cited to the articles, to the prominence, to the discussion that took place around this installation. There's no question that the artist was noticed because of this installation. The appellate division upheld Supreme Court's decision, finding that the installation was displayed between 1979 and 1989 on the 4,500 square foot wall sign that directed attention to the artist and maintained its character as an advertising sign. Under the legal standard applied by the courts, there's no question that the video wall directs attention to the appellant's flagship retail store. The video wall is just as newsworthy and attention directing as the Varick Street installation. If an artist's faded signature that was no longer visible could be considered to direct attention to an artist and make the display an advertising sign, all the more so with the flashing video wall displayed across two stories of Microsoft retail store from one wall to the next, immediately above the Microsoft logo, be considered a sign. Surely the video wall's prominence in attracting attention to the Microsoft store is as great as the prominence of the weathered panels in directing attention to the artist's sale of his paintings. Notably, Supreme Court found that the Varick Street installation directed attention to the artist regardless of whether you could read his name or not. On this point, the video wall's installation is even more attention directing because the appellant's logo, its corporate signature, if you will, is right below the video wall's display. There is no dispute that the video wall, a subject of news stories that emphasize, emphasize Microsoft's brand-oriented advertising and its flashing display directs viewers' attention to the retail store in which it is located, especially considering the appellant's logo appears right below. While the city has taken the position that the Varick Street installation is not a sign because it was basically blank, it did not relate to any commercial endeavor. In contrast, the video wall is in the storefront window in the storefront window has a direct commercial connection. Therefore, should the Court of Appeals overturn the Varick Street decision, it is easily distinguishable from the video wall in the Microsoft Store window. Lastly, the board's resolution in 332 West 44th Street, Manhattan, the Bravo case, also supports that the video wall is a sign. In 332 West 44th Street, the board found that the Bravo facade installation was designed as a deliberate visual reference to the existing signage at the premises. As with the Bravo installation, which referenced the font color and whimsy of other on-site advertisements, regardless of their particular expressions, the video wall serves as a visual link to the existing video walls adorning the store's interior. Both the video wall and the interior video walls feature high-resolution displays showcasing the appellant's technological prowess. The video wall also reflects Microsoft's long-standing use of art-style imagery in its brand-oriented advertising campaigns. According to Merriam-Webster's Collegiate Dictionary, to advertise means to call public attention to, especially by emphasizing desirable qualities, so as to arouse a desire to patronize. Additionally, advertisements in general, and Microsoft's in particular, do not always overtly peddle products. Based on Microsoft's art style advertising, the video wall is simply the next iteration of Microsoft's brand story, an unparalleled advertising experience moving people down the purchase funnel. Accordingly, consistent with the board's resolution for 332 West 44th Street, the video wall is also a sign. 
ultimately based on the court decisions in, Bar in the Barrick Street matter that have held that a painted piece of plywood with eroded paint colors weathered over time is a sign. The Department of Buildings questions whether there is any choice left for the board to find that the video wall display at Microsoft's retail flagship store is not a sign. Alternatively, given that the city is challenging the court's decision, and if it is overturned and the board's resolution reinstated, the department contends that the video wall is easily distinguishable from the Barrick Street plywood display because of the video wall's prominence directly at the com commercial premises. For this and all the reasons set forth in our submissions, we request that the board affirm the department's determination. Thank you. Okay. What's a brain, what do you say, brain story? A brain, uh, Brand story? Oh, brand. brand oh, story. brand. Sorry. Brand. Brand story. Brand, story. No. <laughs> brand story. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, do you have questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because no, I think council yeah. has to respond. Okay. Thank you. Oh, and the only um, comment about Times Square was um, reviewing 81732. Um, it appears that the requirement is for illuminated signs. So um, when I went back and reviewed that provision, I didn't see any requirement for advertising. advertising. Okay. Good morning, Chair Promoter Commissioners. My name is Jay Siegel. I represent Microsoft. The appellate division decision that um, DOB just spoke about is two paragraphs. The first paragraph discusses the procedural history of the uh, legal dispute. The second paragraph, the first part of it talks about how in the appellate division's view, the board is not to be afforded any deference because it's a question of the law as to whether the um, the art installations a sign or not. There are three sentences left in the appellate division um, decision. It, they say, although the installation might not comport with conventional notations of what constitutes advertising, the court correctly found that it met the zoning resolution's definition of an advertising sign as a sign that directs attention to a business profession, commodity, service, or entertainment conducted, sold, or offered elsewhere than on the same zoning lot. <clears throat> This next sentence, I think, is the operative sentence. It says, the installation directed attention to the artist who inter alia sold off the installation in pieces when it was dismantled 10 years after it first appeared. The last sentence is, accordingly, because the wall sign maintained its character as an advertising sign, non-conforming use was not extinguished. According to the board's resolution in this case, the art installation was 60 feet by 80 feet was signed by the artist and appeared on the building's wall for 10 continuous years. The board's resolution states that whereas DOB notes that the Wikipedia website states that the artist, Terry Fugate Wilcox, was commissioned to create the art installation, identified as a Holland tunnel wall as an art piece. So we took a look at the Wikipedia website that is referenced in the board's resolution and it says, Terry Fugat Wilcox is best known for three monumental artworks. The first mention is the Holland Tunnel Wall, the one that was the subject of the board's proceeding. The second is the three-story self-watering tetrahedrons fountains located in Prudential's Gateway 4 lobby. It was dismantled in 1998. And the third is a 36 foot tall, 3000 AD diffusion piece in J. Hood Wright Park, which is still overlooking the George Washington Bridge. So according to the Wikipedia website, the art installation really did help establish this artist's reputation. It apparently is what he's best known for. On the other hand, as we stated in our initial document, appealing DOB's decision regarding the cultural wall, while the cultural wall may display from time to time the works of famous artists such as de Kooning, they will be interspersed with a wide variety of images, such as the Statue of Liberty, Central Park, the Empire State Building. There won't be any continuous display of one person's artwork for 10 years. And obviously, if the time ever comes to dismantle the culture wall, its video screens are not gonna be sold off with the proceeds donated to any artist whose work is shown on the screens. So consequently, we do not think the limited exposure of great artists' work um, 
on our culture world from time to time is going to enhance the already great reputations and therefore be considered as advertising signs uh, trying to enhance the reputation. But if the board somehow thought otherwise, Microsoft would agree not to display great works of art from time to time on its culture. Only bad works of art. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other thing is I just want to discuss some procedural aspects. One of the things that the building bot neglected to mention to you was that this appellate division decision was entered on March 24th, that they have made at least two substantive submissions to the board after that decision was rendered, and they had a hearing after that decision was rendered, and they haven't brought it up. Now, I appreciate, before this, I appreciate that the Buildings Department has many important things to do. They have to protect buildings in the city, and I know they don't spend all their time um, prosecuting uh, A cases at the board. But this is not a typical decision. This decision on the art installation is one that DOB was totally involved with. They were before you arguing that it was not a sign. They were aware of the decision. They should be aware of that decision. And bringing it up to you now is a new piece of information. But they had it in front of them for more than three months. And when they made various submissions, I don't think it's appropriate. Now, I heard a lot of statements made today by DOB about Microsoft conceding this. And I didn't agree with anything. That was said. We didn't concede anything. We certainly haven't. Been what, what DOB did is, that, in my view, is they used this opportunity to repeat the arguments that they have made many times before about the culture war being assigned. They did not devote, they interspersed references to this basically three-line decision a lot of times, but in essence, they just repeated their arguments. As you know from reading our papers, we've conceded nothing. We don't think those images are assigned. We don't think that they meet the test in Bravo. So. Any concessions that we supposedly make, we don't agree with. The fact that I couldn't write fast enough to write down all the concessions, we've made none. Our papers speak for itself. I don't need any time to submit new papers. The board has read my old papers, and we stand by what we've said. I'm, I'm finished responding to that. Is there anything else the board wants? Yeah, there was just a question about um, the use of the technology, the Connect technology, which sure. Commissioner Otley Brown is familiar with, but maybe you have more information on that. I think Commissioner Otley Brown is more familiar than I am. But <laughs> I have children. I don't have any <laughs> My kids. <laughs> so Connect software is a modern, innovative technology that allows um, music and visual effects to be guided by movements. Uh, it's new technology. It translates those movements to changing colors and sounds and visuals. As DOB correctly pointed out in its submissions, Microsoft used it as part of a music festival in Seattle um, and as part of an interactive the Delca uh, installation in New York City. And I found out from our attendants at the uh, review session yesterday, they also use it in modern game technology. As we've said in our prior submissions, um, the culture wall has no Microsoft hardware and no Microsoft software except for the legacy Windows 7 system. It certainly has not and will not use Connect technology. There is no interactive relationship between people walking in the street or in the store and what appears on the board. So there is no um, relationship to Connect technology that will be present in the culture wall. Or any other Microsoft technology other than this legacy. Absolutely correct. And when this Windows 7 bites the dust, then what happens? <laughs> well, I trust they can put a, if it, if it needs repair, we'll put a new Windows 7 in. But whatever, if we replace it, it will not be with Microsoft technology. Okay. As embarrassing as that is to say, we're, we're going to make sure that we don't use any Microsoft, continue not to use any Microsoft technology other than the legacy Windows 7 system. Okay. All right. Any questions for either DOB or Siegel. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any other speakers on this? Okay, so I would like to close this again for a motion to close. Chair Promoter? Aye. Vice Chair Hickson? Aye. Commissioner Montanez? Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. So if, if the board is inclined to, to vote today, I would just ask each commissioner to make a, a statement as to two points before the vote. Um, there were two issues that were discussed throughout this hearing. The first is 
um, whether under sort of this board's uh, holding in Bravo, this constitutes an advertising sign. The other is whether, by virtue of the distance from the window, this is a sign or not a sign. Um, so because both issues were sort of before the board, please clarify your positions on both points before voting. Okay. Thank you. So I would like to bring this to a vote. Um, Chair Kohara. So but we're going to make statements before we, we actually vote. So um, my, my feeling is that the, this is not a sign actually for two reasons. I haven't been able to find a nexus between the imagery that I've seen in action several times on standing on that street corner. Um, <coughs> All of the imagery, was, for one, it's very beautiful, but it doesn't have any reference to any products. And then, um, as we've learned and as I've researched, uh, the kinds of the driver software is not related to Microsoft. Uh, sure, it directs attention to the site by being something that's very beautiful, but that would be like having a gargoyle on the building. I don't see why that's different, any kind of decorative element. Um, it's just that our technology allows decoration now to move as opposed and to change as opposed to being static. So if that had been wallpaper, it would have been the same thing. Wallpaper with birds on it or something like that, it would have been the same. That was the conversation, exactly the conversation we had in Bravo. And it, we were able to find a nexus with their advertising campaign. With this one, I, I haven't been persuaded by DOE's very thorough research. I appreciate the quality of the research, but I just didn't see that that's what shows up on the screens that we see in action. With respect to the, the distance, I also think that the, you can't just keep um, digging deeper into the storefront. You can't say that something, because it's big, is part of being in the window. I mean, we can go back 30 feet, we can go to the back wall, the elevator banks. There's always, there are many, many signs in buildings where we can read clearly what the product is, and it's so far back that, but totally visible, the signs maybe are 30 feet tall, and I can read the word, like for instance, there's a chase sign that's like, it's got to be a hundred feet back from the street, and you can read it clearly. Is that advertising? So, um, so when when the zoning resolution says in a window, I have to go back to the time when it said that in a window, which referred to vitrines, which were about two and a half, three feet deep historically. And if it's intended, if city planning wants it to include things that are deeper, I think they're going to have to clarify what they mean by in a window, but a vitrine is a vitrine and this is not a vitrine. So with that, I, um, I, what is it, what are we doing here? The DOB is deny, motion to deny the, no, 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 motion to grant the appeal, right, grant the appeal. Okay. Vice Chair Hinkson. Um, I too, feel that this installation is not akin to what um, we saw in the Bravo case. I think we took great pains to make sure and to question um, and to verify that the imagery that will be shown uh, will not have a nexus to what is either sold or in the store or what Microsoft um, sort of puts out into the world, and I think that that's the most important part. Um, it's a very fine line, you know, between what is art and what is consumable by the rest of the world, as opposed to what could be conceived as, as an advertisement. Um, but I think in this case, uh, we clearly have images and the portent of images that uh, are of an artistic nature and um, do not uh, harken back to, uh, to Microsoft or Microsoft subject matter. Um, in the case of distance in a window or not distance in a window, uh, it's very amorphous. I mean, I agree with the chair that if I had some sort of sign or even a mannequin, standing in the middle of my store, nothing else around it, um, and you could see it from the front window, would you then say that this is a sign in a window? I don't know if you can. I think that, that indeed, 
um, a sign in a window brings you closer to uh, to that window and that it means you know I'm looking at it it's right there in front of me I may not be cognizant of what's behind it I don't I may not you know be aware that there's something else in the store because I'm directed to the thing in the window um, so uh, and again if, if city planning does not agree with that or think that uh, perhaps it's a little too loosey-goosey, then I think they need to take a look at their, um, their text and tighten it up a bit so that we all have uh, guidance uh, and all sort of see the same thing at the same time. So therefore, um, I guess I'm voting aye. Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Martinez. Yes, um, I don't see any nexus between the video wall and Microsoft, similar to the Bravo case. And I think this is distinctly different from the Barrack Street sign where there was a definite artist and artwork involved. Um, regarding the distance from the window, to me it's a little bit more difficult, but I think DOB has been uh, inconsistent regarding how they interpret this, especially uh, with regard to the Uniglow, where they had a backdrop, they said as, as long as it's not a, a backdrop with no, you know, product references, even though it's in a window, it's just a backdrop. So um, I think city planning needs to revisit some of the sign regulations. It would be a good idea, and I'm voting aye. Commissioner on the ground. I'm also voting aye. I'm not convinced by DOB's arguments. I do not believe that there's a nexus between the wall installation and products that are offered for sale by Microsoft either on the premises or off the premises. I'm not convinced by the argument that this installation is in a window. It's several feet behind a window and I don't think that you can change what constitutes in a window based on arbitrary criteria that's not written into the text, like size or degree of visibility. And Okay. Thank you very much, all. Great job. Thank you. Continue. Do we want to do a second call on Carl's? Call so far. You give us call so far? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Second call, call so far is... 4-95 BC, 2123 Hillside Avenue, Manhattan. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we attended review session yesterday. Uh, Michael McManus, attorney for the applicant, uh, attended review session yesterday. Uh, we do have the community board disposition. They approved the application. Um, we will get a photo of the rear wall to uh, this week. And as to why monthly parking was previously allowed rather than transient, we'd have to do further research, but we don't think that uh, there's any neg negative impact uh, sought by the limitation. And it's approved, uh, the community board approved uh, transient use going forward, and it's the amendment that we would seek. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Sorry, there was a, I'm just checking whether there's any comments that we needed. Now, are there any other questions on this? Uh, so, oh, okay, so um, Commissioner uh, Shonda had comments yesterday and I neglected to read them. So I just, she said that the existing and proposed plan shows a different tax lot number for the abutting property and subject lots. So as long as you're providing us with photos, if you could correct that, the tax lot numbers for budding property and subject plot between the existing and proposed. Um, on, on the plans themselves? Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, we can Just check that. that. Check it, yeah. Um, and I guess, um, if you and if you have this information, what's a typical turnover rate for the transient parking? I don't, have, I don't have what I can Yeah, get no, to. but to get this, because you're going to be submitting some photos. Right. And also, does the peak utilization vary between the transient and the monthly parkers? I mean, it seems like with the monthly parkers, there are people leaving and transients are coming. That's, you know, that's what I would think would happen in this situation. Uh, 
So if you could just respond to those questions. Any others from us on this side? Are there any speakers on this? Okay. Um, so then, if you could submit that material. Let's see what we could do this for. I'm afraid um, September 20th is the earliest that we can do this, but if you submit all these materials, we could do a closed vote on this September 20th. All right. Okay, so um, that would mean you submitting on August 31st. Sure, we can definitely do that. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, back to appeals calendar. Continue hearing items. I Comments. Sound check. Sound check. <laughs> oh, wait. Okay. Um, where's number 732-15? Yeah. Okay. Maybe it's, yeah, maybe it is that one. Are we good? Yeah. Is it safe? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Continue hearing items. Item number 7, 232-15A, 840 West End Avenue, Manhattan. September 20th. September, okay. For the submission of August 31st. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, just to add, since they requested an adjournment, that they have to be responsive to our comments or we're not going to get anywhere. <laughs> let, just let them know. <laughs> Item number 8, 2016-1218A, 97 Store Avenue, Staten Island. Good morning. Todd Dale for the applicant. Good From review session, I know there were few issues that were raised. First, with respect to the community board, we reached out and spoke with the community board yesterday. Um, uh, just to clarify for the board, we originally met with them on April 13th to table the vote on that application at the time for the sole issue uh, pertaining to uh, DEP approval of uh, drainage at the site, which really wasn't tied to this particular application. Uh, they rescheduled it for May 18th. We had a conflict, but we sent them an email explanation and spoke to someone at the community board. Um, uh, at the time, uh, there were no construction plans filed, so we didn't have the, the drainage plan set. We've since confirmed with the architect that they're proposing on-site dry wells. We sent that information to the community board, um, which was a response to their question. Um, she said, uh, my understanding is that they would send a letter to the board. Mm -hmm. uh, based on that information, but it seems like there was some miscommunication, but we did uh, appear before them and communicate with them, and I think that there was some. She did send an email to the board confirming okay. that you had met okay. at the Land Use Committee meeting. Okay, and the board, for whatever reason, decided not to hold their hearing. I don't understand that. I, just, I mean, in Staten Island Community Board 3, drainage is an issue, and mm -hmm. you know, if we had the information at the time, the original hearing would have passed it on, even if it's not necessarily pertinent to this. Happy to share with them. I'm glad we got the information to him now. Right. Hopefully it's resolved. Uh, with the fire department, um, I don't know if a letter has yet been submitted. I know that the revised plans, there was some uh, miscommunication in getting the, the plans of the fire department, but the most recent set should address all of the issues that were raised in the most recent letter, which were showing the entrances, showing the hydrant, and also a note regarding the sprinkler in the building. Um, I don't know what to... So will fire department will speak if they think okay. they and then um, the last issue was with regard to the ledge plan and the access. Um, I do understand the board's concerns, but I would point out a few things. First of all, what we're proposing here is comparable to all existing development uh, on this site or in the vicinity of this site. Store Avenue has uh, small warehouses and commercial development. There's deliveries that are currently happening at all of these sites. Some of the sites the trucks will pull in, sometimes it's the, the trucks will uh, have to back out. Um, you know, as proposed right now, uh, the access what we're showing is the largest possible truck that might visit the site. But realistically, this is only 4,000 square feet of warehouse space. The upper level is office. That's the reason the parking spots, which aren't required, are shown there uh, because the property owner wanted to provide parking for the office uses. Um, we believe it's really going to be more of an operational issue. If for some reason one of the tenants there has a truck that needs to come in, 
they would just need to back out and to temporarily remove one of the cars from the parking spot. But as I said, with a 4,000 foot site, which is currently shown as divided between four 1,000 square foot tenants, there's really no expectation there's gonna be a high volume of traffic, uh, you know, different from what's already existing on, on Ape Store Avenue. Because mm -hmm. it's not like a retail. No, it is definitely not retail. As I said, it's office above and uh, warehouse use below. Mm -hmm. And, you know, assuming the fire department uh, is uh, satisfied with the latest plan. We would say the most important issue is the fire department having the largest trucks are likely to access the site, and if they're satisfied with access, we... Any questions? Okay. No? Okay, so then, thank you. So Thanks. let's have Mr. Scudillo. Good morning, Madam Chair. Commission is Anthony Scudillo, Fire Department. Yes. Uh, the fire department letter issued uh, uh, May 5th, uh, 2016, had uh, multiple uh, requests, and uh, I hadn't received the latest drawings. I did receive them. I haven't had a chance to respond, but the answer is they have, in fact, complied with all the fire department's uh, concerns, and we have no objection for, for this case to move forward. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. So how does everybody feel about the... I'm sort of, I'm sort of being swayed by Commissioner Otley Brown's comment <laughs> by that it's not retail. There's probably a guy who's going to stand around and say back up, back, back up like that and give instructions so that it's in nobody's interest for the cars to get smashed that are parked there by the by the business owners, right? So it seems to me that. Store Avenue is a through street. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. It's you. a through street. Uh, I believe it, it goes through, and um, at the end of the block, uh, it, it dead ends, and then you can go left or right. So yes, through all the way. Okay, Thank and you. it's it's two way though. It is two way. Yes. Uh, there is so a you don't like the, if the truck comes in one way, it can back out the same way and go straight. It, can it go doesn't straight, have yes. to. It, can go, it doesn't have to make exactly. It, it doesn't have to do any cake turns. I, or, I'm just concerned because there is a beautiful state park across the street with lovely fencing. Um, and there's already like truck ruts in the road and that was my concern regarding no. these large trucks backing out into their property no. mm -hmm. understood um, all I can say is that you know this the, the, because of the size of this and it's comparable to the other buildings we really believe that there will be limited uh, deliveries and hopefully anyone to say this <coughs> will avoid <coughs> truck ruts I'm wondering if there is right. anything that can be done to contact is that a public is that a city park? No, it's a state. Clay state Pitts park. Pond Park. So who it's maintains New York state park. the kind of the curb way there? I'm just wondering whether like bollards could be installed yeah. there. Is that something like that DOT would do that put up bollards along that opposing? I, I don't know yeah. um, if it's on state land. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Who don't know. I mean, there is a CCO opinion on this street. I mean, to be honest, this type of application, these other buildings were recently constructed, you know, under the prior Department of Buildings policy. Uh, we wouldn't have needed a GCL 36. It's only now with the recent change that Sorry. just because this is a non-residential <laughs> on a CCL, that's why the application is yeah. here, so. All right. I don't know exactly what to suggest because it's not like a DOT. It's not like you can reach out to DOT and ask them to put bollards on state property. What do we do? Mm -hmm. So, huh? No, we, we can't. No, often we say, you know, reach out to DOT and get a no parking sign in place and that kind of thing. We can't we do have that to go here. To the state and ask we it. have to make friends with the. Is it Shippo? State yeah, it's Shippo. Yeah. Right. Anyway, okay. All right. Um, I think we can close this. Chair for letter? Aye. Vice Jamingson? Aye. Commissioner Montanez? Aye. Michelle Lee Brown. Aye. Okay, so we don't have the sign and seal plans yet, right? No, we did, we'll do that this week. Okay, so if you could submit them this week, that's the only thing that we're waiting and for. And the official fire department lot. Yeah, okay. Okay, so what do we do about this? Is just a vote? It's just a vote. We can put, put this on. Can we put it on for the 23rd? I'm here like for the 20th cases the 23rd, so that's perfect. What are you doing on the 23rd? I'm here for plenty of cases the 23rd. Oh, okay. Perfect. Yeah. We can do this for the 23rd because it's just a vote. Yeah. We just need to see the okay the plan. So let's see. Submit it as soon as you can. Um, 
Okay. Right, so August 23rd? Yeah. Thank you. New cases, item number 9, 2016 4182A, 16 Daryl Court, Staten Island. Good morning, Jay Goldstein for the applicant. I attended yesterday's review session and would like to address the board's questions. Mm -hmm. um, with regard to the the parking in the rear or the parking lot of the building, the <coughs> chair mentioned that maybe we put a sidewalk along their court. So from the parking lot, there's actually shown on the plans, there's entrances to the building. So you don't have to access Derrick Court to go to the front of the building along Industrial Loop. So people who park in the parking lot will actually walk into the entrances of the building through the parking lot. Additionally, Derrick Court is a city street, or it's city owned property, and if we, it's 40 feet wide. If we put a, a sidewalk there, we would reduce the width of that proper, of the street, making access and turnaround for the trucks a little harder. So given the access, we believe that the sidewalks are not necessary for this use of, for the program, for the operational plan of the facility. Do you happen to know whether this this whole thing is one, like, is it one zoning lot? Is, do you happen to know, like, what the ownership structure is of this oh. whole area around there, around it's, industrial? We own our two lots. Are, are, each lot is individually tax owned. Our two lots are a single, tax, are a single zoning lot. Every lot is its own entity, but there's an easement for sewers and things of that nature mm -hmm. um, for this area. Okay. Mm, so I thought, so I'm just looking, hold on a second. I'm just looking at the survey. So, so you're saying one of the typical man doors could be used for access to the showroom? Well, we, sh we show on the side of each roll down gate, there's a, it, it notes it on sheet A300, metal and glass entrance door. So it is intended to be used as an entrance door so that they don't And you can just put signage there. It says yeah. ad entrance to showroom. Yeah, it's fine. I would be satisfied with that. But so they don't have to walk on the roadway. There's no there's no need okay. for it because they are entering they are entering from the parking lot. And to the uh, if I made it the next point, along industrial loop, those those bays over there, those aren't actual parking lots that the vans or trucks will pull in, smaller cars during the day, not large um, you mean pull trailers. up to the roll down door? They'll pull in towards the roll down door, they'll load their trucks and leave. So it's not an actual parking space. That's why we didn't note it as a parking okay. space. But we do have the required number of parking spaces in our in our parking lot. Mm -hmm. So all of these roll down doors will be for customers to back up and the, get loaded? Right. This is a, it's a large warehouse. They'll, ro they'll pull up, load their trucks and leave. Next to each roll down gate there is an entrance door, this, this metal and glass door which everyone will be able to use, and that's how they'll enter the, the premises. So the site plan shows um, little arrows directly from industrial loop, and I know you had a comment in your statement of facts that they're actually not going to be used for parking. I'm not sure I understand that. So that's why I just explained that so they're not parking spaces. They'll be used where, you know, you'll pull your car up, you'll load your, your flatbed or van and then you'll pull away from the space the the facility so it's not going to be used as a parking space you won't park there and leave your car if you come in for the day to work our parking right. spaces are provided in the parking lot no but it's it <coughs> what I understood from your statement of facts was more like you're not going to use it for you know vehicles at all but the fact is you are using it for vehicles vehicles I believe in my statement I do way. in my statement I discussed the operational plan that along that frontage you'll pull your car and load your car and then go Okay. Um, it is a disguise. In response to notice of comments, we discussed it, uh -huh. and it's actually shown on our uh, vehicle circulation uh, plan. Okay. So one of them is only 15 feet deep, more or less, because of the angle. Right. So then. These are not um, tractor trailers. These are more of like a small car, or van, or what have you, comes to pick up uh, materials and leaves. But they're going to. So it's not going to overhang the line? It should not. That's the intent. And they, they have sufficient number of gates and parking spaces that it shouldn't be a problem. So the whole property line will be fenced, and then there'll be all these gates to open up onto these That's doors? What, um, 
that's what it appears to be. I, I wasn't sure about, I'm not sure about the fencing along industrial loop, but it appears right. so. But there will be fencing along the side yards and along the front yard and on their court, the security gate. So then, so there's, so there's fencing, so how's that work? So you have to open the fence to drive in? It's more of a security fence for the, for nights to close up the facility. Oh, okay, so during the day, somehow... During the day, this will all be open. It'll just be a, as is common in this area, in this, on this stretch of property, it'll be an open warehouse with roll-down gates that are open. You'll come in, you'll, you'll back your car up to load. If you have business in the, in the facility, that'll take longer. You'll go park in the parking lot and go into the facility. So wait a minute. So there, I understand the fence along Derrick because it's a classic drive up and then you turn in, however you turn into those, to the roll up doors. But I, what I'm not understanding is industrial loop. How can you have a fence there? And how can you have a fence there? Because each one of those has to be approached head in. You can, first of all, you can back into those if it's a car, you can back into that. Into no, that. but I mean, there's, if there's a continuous fence, it would mean you'd have to have many, 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 many roll-up Right, like I, said, like I said, I'm not positive about the fencing on industrial oh. loop, but okay. the actual roll-down roll, roll down gates on the facility will be individual roll-down gates. Right, that part I understand. Yeah. It'll, be, it'll be very similar to, if you look at the pictures, very similar to the other warehouses that are on this area, that, that have, are in this area. That have a fence. No, the, the design of the building, and then there'll be a security fence for the parking lot. Does all of those ones that you're showing on industrial loop have fences? That's why, it worked. you know, the subject of the sidewalk came up from that photo number one, where just, I don't know if it's adjacent, it's across the street from the site on industrial, there's a, a narrow sidewalk. Right, so there are no sidewalks on Derrick Court. So putting a sidewalk in Derrick Court would significantly reduce the width of, or would reduce the width of Derrick Court, and that's what we don't, we prefer not to do, especially if we don't anticipate anyone going along Derrick Court to enter the building. So what about sidewalk on, so your building, yeah, what about a sidewalk on industrial loop then? Then we'd have to have a number of curb cuts, and it's just, the, the entire building's on grade and comes straight off, I, I don't see. No, you only need one curb cut. We have six gates along industrial loop. They each one get into Wait a minute. The Isn't into oh the act oh okay. Industrial is where you go in all of those. Oh okay, yeah. right. It's Derek where you only have one curb cut. Right. Derek, we have one curb cut to enter the parking lot, correct? Right. Okay. Maybe you can find out what they plan to do in terms of fencing along industrial loop. Because it looks like most of the businesses are fenced except for that lighting company. And they have. I can ask. Um, Everything's fenced. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason they're fenced because they're open storage. Right. This is case. not proposed it's to be open storage. Line. Right. I'm looking at this. A lot of them don't have the ones that have fencing don't necessarily have openings along that street, um, or or like the chair mentioned, they do have open storage. We're proposing to keep everything within our building and the roll down gates will be closed at night and the security fence along Derrick Park will be closed at night. Mm -hmm. So we believe that's sufficient to protect everyone's entrance and to yeah. make sure that the, yeah. the access and the, and the circulation is fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's one one that's similar on industrial, on industrial On industrial court photo 11, it's yeah. not fence. It has a small fencing, but it's not a it just has fence. like a parapet, well, but you can't drive there, so it's a different... Right. Um, we believe that well, since everything is, is going to be incl enclosed within the building, there's no open storage proposed, that right. the fencing is unnecessarily necessary. Mm -hmm. Unnecessarily <laughs> necessary? Not, not, not necessarily, necessarily necessary. necessary. <laughs> Still, I'm not used to being up here this early. I'm usually last in the day. You're right. Um, <laughs> If so in terms of the yeah. number of curb cuts, you're going to have to have a curb cut for each loading bay. It, it's actually built on grade. There are no, there's no curb over here, so I don't anticipate a, an actual curb cut being provided, as with most of the other lots in this area. Okay. And the, the final question, if I may, was with regard to the FDMY letter. We did receive an FDMY letter at three comments. 
Mm -hmm. The first comment was that the building be fully sprinklered. We note on our plans that it's going to be fully sprinklered. The next comment with regard to the um, hydrant being within 100 feet of a Siamese connection, we're approximately 90 feet from the Siamese. It's also noted on our plot plan. And the final was with regard to any security fencing that we file an application with FDMY, which we will. Okay. Any other comments, concerns, anything? Are there any speakers on this? Okay. Does anybody have anything that they would like to have corrected? Otherwise, I would like to close this. Just that to clarify, you're not putting any fencing along industrial. We'll tell them not to. Okay. Yeah. So it'll just be it around the parking lot. It's line. not necessary, it's and not they're necessary. not in the business of spending money unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> not necessary to be unnecessary, right? However, not to argue on. Okay, so then with a motion to close. Chair Promoter? Aye. Vice Chair Hickson? Aye. Commissioner Montanez? Aye. Commissioner Ashley Brown? Aye. And then with, I would like to make a motion to grant and only on condition that the building be fully sprinklered, which it already says on the plans. Chair for water? Aye. Vice Chair Hinkson? Aye. Commissioner Watsonis? Aye. Commissioner Shanti Brown? Aye. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Zoning calendar decision items. Item number 10, 214 BC, 4605 Parsons Boulevard, Queens. Good morning, Chair Perlmutter. Uh, staff and commissioners. My name is Emily Simons, Simons and Wright, attorney for the applicants. Thank you. For a motion to grant. Chair Perlmutter? Aye. Vice Chair Hinkson? Aye. Commissioner Montanez? Aye. Commissioner Arthur Brown? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 11, 221, 15 BZ, 4155 Washington Street, Brooklyn. Good morning, Todd Dale for the applicant. Okay. I think we said, I just need the fire department to comment on this because you have a note that the fire department won't review the application until approval, but you do have a pass on the sprinklers. So, right? We have to so, reopen. And I think we had the fire department. I just need the fire department. We're not open. Just give me a, a nod, yes or no. Okay. Yes. Good. All right. <laughs> no, I don't. It's all right. Um, so then, for a motion to grant on condition that the building obtain a CFO in two years, finally, please. <laughs> Chair Pomoner? Aye. Vice Chair Hickson? Aye. Commissioner Ashley Brown? Aye. I'm sorry, Commissioner Montanez. Aye. Sorry. <laughs> you weren't trying to catch us, Tony. <laughs> Did we get everybody? Yep. We did. We just got everybody. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Doesn't always have to be alphabetical. <laughs> <laughs> just keep on their toes. Yeah, we can say it. Keep on their toes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Item number 12, 251 15 BZ, 127 West 26th Street, Manhattan. Good morning, Madam Chair, Commissioners, Frederick A. Becker. Good morning. So we had, again, we had closed this, but I think we, there's an appointment for a fire alarm inspection, yes. and the fire department usually is once it's in their books, they're good. So I think we can vote on this. And we have proof of a sprinkler inspection. Thank you. So for a motion to grant. Chair Promoter? Aye. Vice Chair Hickson? Aye. Commissioner Montanez? Aye. Commissioner Shockley Brown? Aye. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Item number 13, 2016-1210-BZ, 2590 Highland Boulevard, Staten Island. I just want to note that th this needs a corrected building objection. I know we wanted to try and fix this otherwise, but uh, we'll have to defer the decision. Yeah. We can, we can put okay. it on for the. So, um, yeah, yeah. Right, the 20, which one, the 23rd? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Do you think that's enough time? 23rd, it's only two weeks? Yeah. That should be enough time. Yeah, okay. All right, and they can submit it as long as they get it in the day before the vote, the hearing. That's fine. Okay. All right, so defer decision 
August 23rd? August 23rd, yeah. Okay. Continued hearing items, item number 14, 5602BZ, 317JL Road, Brooklyn, and item number 15, 17-14BZ, 600 McDonald Avenue, Brooklyn. Good morning, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Uh, Stuart Klein. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Stuart Klein, on behalf of the uh, the application and the um, continue uh, the compliance hearing. Uh, would you like me to? Before you get started, sure. we're just going to do um, some housekeeping. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Was it not this full? Yeah, no, yeah. You were, no, you were. Just to do some some table setting for both of these matters, I'm going to sure. um, read some things into our record and then just. Uh, discuss a few points and then turn it over to, to the commissioners and to you. Um, so just to uh, read a statement from the fire department, um, on uh, July 21st, 2016, the fire department observed uh, that the subject premises were set up and used as a banquet hall and catering hall. Um, the fire department issued a letter to the board on July 26, 2016. Uh, the department objects to the illegal use of the school cafeteria uh, at 600 McDonald 317 Day Hill, uh, which they've confirmed is a commercial banquet and catering hall. That use is obviously the subject of this hearing. Um, the fire department <coughs> recommended to the board that the board not vote on the application for 600 McDonald at this time uh, and take no action until the illegal use is either legalized or confirmed permanently discontinued. That's something that you and I, Councilor, have discussed. Uh, DOBs also uh, inspected the premises and confirms uh, what the fire department has observed. The CFO is for a two-story and basement with classrooms. Uh, DOB personnel was told that the school was closed and observed uh, a 200 foot by 35 foot portion of the school basement and cellar being used as a catered reception area. Um, they noted the three awnings for the Teferis Mordecai uh, on C on McDonald and on uh, Dayhill. Uh, and they also noted that the uh, they were advised by staff at the premises that the school was closed at the time that they observed a catering use and that the use had nothing to do with the school. Um, this is not information that's new to you. Um, the uh, applicant was actually very gracious and allowed uh, the board to take a very close look at the inspection. Councilor, you were there. Um, the board has also observed, based on reading of the plans and, and an inspection of the premises, uh, that there is a catering facility, a catering use of the, the cellar. I don't believe that's been disputed. Um, and then just in the interest of bringing us sort of up to speed, um, you have communicated through staff your intention to withdraw the application at 600 McDonald Avenue. Uh, the board has, has stated that it would accept that withdrawal as being made without prejudice um, and that should a new application be filed down the line for a similar application to expand the school use based on its programmatic needs, that the board would waive those fees because the applicant has already paid those fees. Um, so premised on the applicant's statement that it will withdraw the 600 McDonald, uh, the purpose of this hearing is really to set out a cure uh, for the catering use, um, whether it to be discontinued or cured. And uh, as we've discussed, uh, we believe there is a, a sort of a workable cure um, so if you would like to sort of present that to the board and then the board has a few questions and conditions um, and just to fast forward, uh, the end result of this, assuming that the, the proposed cure is workable and that the board is amenable, um, we will be holding compliance hearings on this sort of every six months uh, until the cure is realized, which we believe to be re you know, in, re in a reasonable time. Um, okay. So and to you, yeah. Councilor. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, I'm not going to dispute anything that you said or any of the board's prior observations. Uh, I will, however, note, because uh, I think it's important to me and I think it's important to the board, that uh, with regard to any use at the location, uh, we've had our architect, engineer, and the fire department, the police department, uh, the fire department, and the, <coughs> the building department have confirmed uh, that there are no safety issues. Uh, the sprinklers are all we're operating properly. There's proper egress at the site. Uh, because to me the most important thing here uh, is the safety of whoever is using the location, no matter what it's used for or the number of people who are on site. Uh, after speaking with staff, uh, it is our intent to, A, today and officially, withdraw the application uh, for the 600, uh, the 600 uh, building uh, without prejudice, number one. Number two, uh, Mr. 
uh, Friedman and I will be prosecuting a case before the City Planning Commission seeking in all likelihood a change in use, uh, uh, rather change in the underlying zoning uh, to a, an R6 with a C2 overlay, uh, which will accommodate the uh, establishment of a commercial uh, catering hall at 317. Uh, we will also uh, we will look forward to presenting to you uh, on a uh, twice a year basis uh, our progress uh, before the City Planning Commission. We've already engaged uh, several people to look into that. Uh, there are two other items that have to be covered, however. One is that um, we will be uh, taking all waste generated out, out of 317 uh, uh, through, through and out uh, to McDonald Avenue. It will no longer burden uh, the people who uh, live on 317 block and That's Mr. Friedman. Dale Road. The Dale, Dale Road, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, I stand corrected. Uh, and Mr. Friedman is uh, currently exploring the creation of a refrigerated room uh, for the putricibles uh, before they're taken out to uh, the hauler. So uh, we intend to have all of that stuff uh, in motion probably sometime next week or the week after. Great. And, may, and a compactor? And to just keep the quantity of trash down? Could where, where I, I asked Mr. Friedman that uh, if, if we have the room, we will certainly do that. Mm -hmm. yeah, we looked at that. That would actually work to our benefit as well as the benefit of the community. Okay, great. Are any any questions from the board? Are there any speakers on this? Good morning, uh, Richard Class, attorney for Dayhill Realty. Uh, there are two other uh, neighboring properties. I heard the uh, withdrawal of the application on uh, 600 McDonald Avenue. Um, what's, I, I don't know the status of the Dayhill Road application, if that means that it's no longer an application to uh, just enforcement or if something else has to be done. So um, there's currently an application to expand the yeshiva at 600 McDonald. That application is being withdrawn without prejudice. Okay. Uh, the, the school is going to put in an application at city planning. Uh, you'll be notified when, it, when that application is made. Currently, there's no application for 317 Day Hill. However, because of the use of Day Hill, the board called a compliance hearing to discuss uh, the catering use, which will be discontinued or legalized. Okay. Um, I, I know that I... I don't know, I know I filed letters with uh, this board. Um, how would I get notice of the application to city planning? To, I, I, I will contact Mr. Klein. I'll let you know. All right, and I'll, I'll contact with the neighbors. Um, the other quest is, uh, we'll call it a request or a suggestion to Mr. Klein, but uh, it seems that if they're going to ask to change the zoning, that they have to come before city planning with clean hands. And they're continuing to have these uh, um, catered events which is acknowledged, uh, uh, which my client had put before the board, and obviously the governmental agencies have confirmed it. Um, they ought to stop doing that if they're going to go and ask for a change in zoning. It's not uh, uh, appropriate that they continue having these affairs, which are very disruptive to neighbors on Bay Hill Road. So uh, it's not really for the board or the board staff to comment on city planning's um, analysis of the application that will be made. Um, I would comment that city planning often sort of does have legalizations happen, so it's not entirely out of character, but the applicant has represented that they will uh, address the points that you, I believe yourself, raised to this board with respect to trash, uh, and the, this board will be monitoring uh, for purposes of compliance because this has been a problem that the trash does not come out on Day Hill, and, and this board and city planning together will be trying to make sure that the site is as little of a nuisance as possible. Thank well, you. But with re and with respect to the issue of the use, we have instructed the applicant, the, the property owners, to discontinue or legalize the use. That that's their, they have to be given the opportunity to cure in order for the Department of Buildings and the Fire Department to enforce. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. so, okay. so then, is there anything we have to do? Are yeah, are there any other speakers? Oh yes. Good morning. Uh, my name is John Mui. I'm a resident of 347 Day Hill Road. My family is 
lived in that house over 40 years. Uh, and I just want to say that since this process has started, I guess over three years ago, it just seems like the applicant has kind of shifted back and forth to try and accommodate the issues that have been presented before the commission. And I would strongly say that at this point, they've not addressed many of the issues that have been brought up even since my initial um, participation in the community board meeting. Uh, the catering continues, there's no doubt about that, but initially I think when the application was filed, it was a denial that there was even catering going on. Uh, it was disingenuous at best that the expansion was strictly for educational purposes and dishonest at, at worst. So I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen with 600 McDonald. It just sounds like that right now the application is off the table, but it doesn't mean that they can't reapply and we're going to go through this whole process again. And now we're just addressing the 317 uh, uh, building where the catering goes on. Um, since I've lived there and since the application, uh, applicant has owned that building, I've seen very little to address issues on that block, whether it's trash, snow removal, um, the private carting that they use, which if any of you visit, and I hope that you can have time to visit, the one dumpster that they have is literally leaching toxic waste from all the garbage that they have out there. And it's right next to the apartment building where young people, children, infants play. Now, if you look at that sidewalk, it is literally black because I don't ever recall seeing anybody clean or if it holds down the sidewalk. As for snow removal, yes, I understand if it snows during weekends and because of the Sabbath, that can't be done. But there have been snowstorms that have happened on weekdays and there has been no snow removal. And my understanding is that they're responsible for at least setting up a path after the initial snowfall stops. That, to me, doesn't seem that they've had, they haven't done that, which requires a lot of people, elderly, young people, to walk around it on the sidewalk, which is a lot more dangerous than, you know, I mean, on the street as opposed to the sidewalk. So, I mean, I, I would hope that this discussion about expanding this catering after they find cures or remedies does not go forward because at this point, I don't feel like they can even address the small catering that they have now. I've seen literally trays of food that have been dropped outside 317 as they've wheeled it in that have not been cleaned up. I've seen um, valet parking that takes up uh, parking space. Um, where, where did they park? What do you mean valet parking where? They have valet parking. They look for spaces that are available. I mean, they have, they, uh, they hire people in yellow vests that clearly says valet parking. They sit in front of the corner of Avenue C where the um, guests enter. And the valet parkers take the car and they literally look for spots around the block to park the car. Now, there's already a ton of buses that are parked. I'm not sure if it's yeah. legal or illegal on McDonald Avenue. So if you're talking about continuing that, it's just gonna get worse. Um, they, I mean, there's no question that they use electric sound equipment. I've seen it, I've heard it. Um, I, I, and like uh, the gentleman said, the, the events are continuing. I think two weeks ago, I just saw a wedding, because you can see, because they use that one courtyard and avenue you see for the photos. As clear as day, they're out there taking pictures of event which you know is, is good I mean I, I people are getting married but not at the expense of the neighbors you know who have to live on that block um, I mean as I've gotten older and I'm pretty old at this point I appreciate living in the outer boroughs I work in Manhattan and to get away from that after work is a godsend but with the advent of these additional buses, whether it's from the applicants or other schools that use McDonald Avenue to park the buses, the incessant honking that goes on when they have to pick up the children and drop off the children. And now, since nobody wants to go up McDonald Avenue because all the buses are there, they use the hill road, which now means there's more traffic and there's more honking. So, now this goes on six days a week. We're not talking about just, you know, during maybe Monday to Friday, maybe during certain times of the week. 
It's morning, afternoon, and evenings because of the pickups, drop-offs, and the congestion. So, you know, that addresses 600 McDonald's in terms of them wanting to expand, you know, for educational purposes, which I don't, I don't believe is, is the sole reason. Uh, I'm just curious to see how much um, money they make from the catering versus from the school itself. So I, I urge the commission to really think about the impact that this would have on the neighbors, people who live on the Hill Road, who 20, 30 years, we've set roots. Uh, and as far as I can tell, most of the students and the people who work in 317 and 600 McDonald don't live on that block or the neighboring community of Kensington. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Are there any other speakers? Yes. Good morning. My name is Joseph Murata. I live at 351 Day Hill Road, right next door to Mr. Moy. His family lived there before I moved there. I moved there in 1978, and he was there before me. One block down from us, on the corner of Cotelia Road and Day Hill Road, which is only a couple hundred feet away from a building known as 600 McDonald Avenue, four double wide lots were just acquired by somebody. Four businesses all of a sudden like that went out of business and now these four double wide lots, which are approximately what, 160 by 100, are now vacant. At this hearing uh, a year or so ago, Mr. Friedman says, well, it's Borough Park. We have to go up because you cannot acquire property in this neighborhood anymore. Someone's just acquired four double wide lots, not 600 feet away. Another question I have, in the filing, when I was reading it, I'm not an engineer and I'm not an attorney, I'm just a citizen. In the filing, I noticed that it mentioned number 14, Avenue C, in the filing put this addition on this building. There is no number 14 Avenue C. I've lived there all my life. There's number 12 Avenue C is the last building. Right next to that was the vacant lot that eventually became 600 McDonald Avenue. In photographs that I've submitted two years ago to the board of the building on McDonald Avenue, it shows the door on the building and above the door it says 640. So I question, is this filing correct? I mean, what is this? Is the whole building 600 or is only part of it 600? Because above one door it says 640 McDonald Avenue. Where Dahill Road is, 36th Street begins there. Two blocks up there's a six-story religious girls school going up on the corner of where 13th Avenue, Louisa Street, and 36th Street intersect. Two blocks down Dahill Road is uh, another religious girls school on the, right on the corner of 17th Avenue and Dahill Road. Within a half mile radius of this property, there must be at least eight or 10 or 12 religious schools for girls and boys. And they're talking about going 74 feet more up in the air on, on this building. They claim that they have absolutely nothing to do with 317 Dahill, but on the door of 600 McDonald Avenue, it says, please deliver all the mail to the office at 317 Dahill Road. When they built 317 Dahill Road, they knocked a hole in the foundation wall of 600 and connected those two buildings. Fine. Now I, as I say, not an engineer, not an attorney. They came to this board 10 years ago and requested to put a second story on the building, which they were given permission to do, and they did. I ask you. You want to put two stories 
more, a three-foot parapet wall and a 10-foot high fence. Has any engineering studies been done? It's a, how is the ground going to hold us? I've said it before and I'll say it again. The F train comes up out of the ground right next to this building and becomes an elevated line. Okay, sir. Now, they've withdrawn their application. They've withdrawn their application to add those two stories to the building. So that subject will not be considered by the board anymore. It may, by this board. It may be considered by the Department of City Planning in the future. Um, six months to a year from now, that's for city planning to determine. But this board is no longer considering that proposal. I thank you very much, Madam Chair Warren. May I? Yeah, please. I, I certainly am not in a position to speak to what happened in the past, but I can make certain representations with regard to the future. Uh, before Mr. Class leaves today, uh, I gave him my card, I will give him my uh, mobile number, and I give him my home number. Uh, if there is any, uh, and he could give them to, to those numbers to his clients. If there is any of these problems resurface, I'll be more than happy. I live in downtown Brooklyn to drive out there and address them as they're taking place. Uh, and I will report uh, whatever happens to the board. Uh, I've been involved in, in similar situations. Uh, the hater on, on McDonald Avenue and obviously uh, the vision that's on 52nd Street. And uh, I did a reasonably good, you know, uh, a job cleaning up their acts, and I, I suspect I'll be able to do it here. Okay, so, in, so there's some um, nuisances we didn't, hadn't heard about before that really we need you to focus on with your client. Sure, sure. I, um, I, if I lived next door and people were dropping food on the sidewalk and things of that right. nature, well, I'd trash be up in we, arms. Trash we knew about. Yes. We didn't know about the snow removal problem, which I actually find surprising because there's high school students who are entering the school from that side, so you would think that the sidewalk would be cleared for the high school students. Um, we, all, we didn't know about the valet parking pickup, mm -hmm. and we didn't know about the issue of whether um, it's, there's noise emanating from the activities. What, what, um, I, what I will do is, I'm, I'm sorry, but yeah. what I do, will do is I will make, as I have done before, a transcript of this particular portion of the, uh, right. of okay. the uh, uh, session. I will send a copy over to you. I'll send over a copy to my client, and we will address each and every one of them. Okay. So one of the things that has come up in discussion is about the bus parking on McDonald. Um, when when um, some of us did a site visit there the other day during the day, um, there were a lot of buses parked on the, the building side of McDonald Avenues, but we also know there are times when they're parked on both sides of it. The, it's never clear from looking at the buses and what it says on the buses whose buses those are. But um, an effort should be made to get those buses parked someplace. The only the only thing I know about those is when I was there at the site with you uh, last week, I was told that there that several of those buses were parked on the street uh, because uh, the place where they're normally parked inside the the boundaries of the location were being occupied by uh, by by, uh, by the, the daycare, daycare center. The daycare. But I don't know if that's a particularly good enough reason to park no. on the street I'll explore. So they need to find a, a place for, we talked about this many times, that sure. they need to find a permanent place for the buses to go when they're not dropping students off. Because it really does clog up the traffic. Yeah. Plus there's a bus route along McDonald, I right. believe. So, okay. So you have the list of nuisances. Yes. They and I, and I will give you, I will make a copy of the transcript send it over to you and we'll check off each one in order. And as I said before, they could reach me at my house if they have any problem, and I'll drive over there. Okay. Um, thank you, Council. I think uh, we had said um, six month sort of That's correct. combined study. I think- um, in Or sooner, if you'd want. I think for the first one, um, just to make to make some progress with the refrigerated storage, uh, that the board would propose November 15th as for the- That'll be fine, point. and hopefully if we can do it before then, uh, I'll simply send in proof and we can conceivably adjourn to another time. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I mean, great. Get to November for tea. Yeah, thank you very much. We don't want to talk about it. Yes, yes, <coughs> right. A, re a resolution will be issued reflecting the withdrawal of the dollar without purchase. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you thank you very thank you much. Where's it just a holding date? Uh, there will, right now, there's a hearing date scheduled for November 15th as a compliance hearing. Okay. 
on the Day Hill application, which is BSA calendar number 5602BZ. 1714BZ has been withdrawn. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yeah. Can I just? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Klein, don't leave? Yeah, don't leave. Uh, just quickly. So. Okay. Hold on. My apologies, um, Anthony Scaduto Fire Department. During this period of either legalization or withdrawal, um, you know, I've spoken with Mr. Klein, and the intent, of course, is to get TPAs uh, every time there's an event and to provide all the necessary support and so on, which is great. Um, what I wanted to caution um, the client, or, or you know, um, or Mr. Klein, obviously, the fire department now has become actively involved in this in this thing. Um, one of the things that's come up many times in many locations with uh, one of the requirements for TPA would be fire guards. And I, um, it really is for his benefit rather than, you know, it's not really a, a warning, but just for his benefit. Um, fire guards should be on duty and that should be their one and only responsibility at an event. Uh, they should be uh, approved fire guards with the uh, New York City Fire Department uh, certificate of fitnesses. Um, whether or not they need to be visually uh, identifiable is not important, but uh, what we find in many cases is people from the staff, they'll send 15 people over to take the test for a C of F, and when the fire department comes to observe the event, uh, the management will say, yeah, there's fire guards, but it turns out the one's a waiter, one's in the kitchen, one's in the office. Um, and I just wanted to emphasize, a fire guard is uh, an assigned duty, and that's the only duty. So that if our people do come there and they ask to see fire guards, uh, uh, if they're provided a list of names, they want to be able to match those names up with people, uh, you know, and that would be really one of the things that we'd like to caution. Other than that, uh, you know, hopefully uh, the operation uh, will continue and hopefully it will become legal. And just to clarify with um, the fire department, that typically when fire guards are ordered um, in conjunction with a public assembly permit, that the Department of Buildings and the fire department determine where those fire guards need to be and for the length of stay at that post? That's correct, and usually it's based on uh, when, when uh, Mr. Klein or the architect or engineer applies for a specific uh, TPA. Everything is detailed in terms of exactly. where, how many, and, and so on. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. And, and Thank you. I, I understand uh, Mr. Scaduta's uh, concerns. Uh, I use a number of agencies, uh, and in the past, everybody I've always used has been a retired fire officer. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, so do we, what do we do? We just, that's it. That's it. We don't have to close. We don't have to anything. Right? Okay. It's, been, it's been withdrawn and the, yeah. Okay. Thank you all for coming on this. Thank you. Item number 16, 158, 14 BC, 1179 East 27th Street, Brooklyn. Lyra Altman, the Law Office of Lyra Altman. We did have somebody a 10-year executive session and I also watched the tape last night. In response to two of the comments, I just want to make sure that you understand that we have certainly planned to abide by whatever is on our plans. So the walls that we say are going to be remaining will be remaining. And we'll make sure to let our client know that the fact that they are going to be remaining means they must remain. We will remind him of that, although I am sure he is aware. In addition, no sleeping in the attic that is on our plans. Once again, if it's on the plans, we have every inten intention of following what is on the plans. So I just want to assure your board of that, first of all. Second, I had a, just a quick question regarding the plans. I know there's a comment on the date. Is that something you'd like us to revise at this time, or just in the future keep no, our eye on that? No, just in the future. It was just very hard to follow. I would be looking at two dates that are same. I had to look at the clock date, and then I was thinking, how did you, when you submitted, know that you were submitting the most recent set of plans? I'm very careful about that. I use everything electronically. The moment I receive it, I actually stamp, I stamp it in my computer and put yeah. it into a folder okay. so I know exactly when it comes but in. architects, you know, date your plans. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. I will make sure to remind architects mm -hmm. in the future. Regarding the enlargement on the second floor, I thought that had been resolved at the last hearing. I know that 
we had a lot of discussions, and at one point you turned to Commissioner Chanda, you said, are you okay with that? She said, I'm okay, and we moved uh, on. Later on in the hearing, we came back to it, discussing solely the attic level, talking about the fact that the second floor was already set back five feet, eight inches from the first floor, uh -huh. and she thought that the setback of two feet from between the second floor and the attic wasn't enough to create a visual separation, so she had requested that we provide an additional two feet to create more of a visual separation. So it would be five feet, eight inches between the first and the second, and then four feet between the first and the dormer on the second, on the attic. Sorry, between the second and the dormer on the attic. And that change had been made. So we were under the impression that we had resolved that issue. Okay, my, my notes might not have been updated with that. I do have a bit of a transcription of that hearing if you'd like me to read it to you. No, it's okay if you read it. Then I'm just looking, I think this was a comment about this one. Commissioner Shonda's out, but um, she does think, I think it's, I think maintaining the existing building height, second floor extends out in front. She says all livable spaces are reasonable, so um, difficult to ask for a setback from the front. So I think she did agree that the front is okay. Yeah, her exact phrasing at that hearing was, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, now this is her more recent yeah, comment. Yeah, no, understood. Okay. All right, so, um, all right, so, all right. Are there any, any other comments on this one? Are there any speakers on this? Okay, so then. And the architect is here with us, obviously. Thank you. Um, I don't think there were any other things. Is that a or not? Yeah, I thought it was the front yard. Um, and I, Okay, and in terms of the character in the rear yard, I think that the block has been disassembled that so was, much. That was my point. I appreciate your yeah. taking that. I will make that a little more clear in the future. Okay. So then for a motion to close. Chair Promoter? Aye. Vice Chair Hinkson? Aye. Commissioner Montanez? Aye. Commissioner Brown? Ugly Brown? Aye. <laughs> Um, and um, uh, for a motion to grant on the following conditions that, which is our standard language now on these ones where there's not that many existing walls left, that the existing walls to remain um, as shown on the plans shall not be demolished or the permit is void. Um, and that there are no sleeping or living purposes in the attic. So on that, on that condition, motion to grant. Chair Perlmutter? Aye. Vice Chair Hinkson? Aye. Commissioner Montanez? Aye. Commissioner Alton Brown? Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number 173314 BZ, 2323 East 5th Street, Brooklyn. Good afternoon. What'd you say? She's going to help me out. Nothing. We didn't hear a thing. Uh, Lyra Altman from the Law Office of Lyra Altman. We have a little delay. Our architect is on the way. Would it be possible to second call this item? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> what is she? Okay. Yeah. Item number 18-6415-BZ, 39 Clarkson Street, Manhattan. Oh, now it's worse than wow. sore. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, good afternoon. Allie Carreri, Greenberg Charg, LLP, on behalf of the applicant. Um, we listened to the review session yesterday um, and we appreciate the comments from the chair that the new proposed FAR and massing for the building are in line with the zoning district and the neighborhood. Um, I think I discussed with staff yesterday the issue with the structures on the roof possibly exceeding 33%. Um, for the record, it's not an issue with regard to whether those structures would become floor area as a result of exceeding 33% of the um, floor area of the floor below, but just whether technically DOB would consider that floor to be a 10th floor rather than a roof, roof level, mm -hmm. um, which doesn't require, additional require an additional waiver, okay. right? So um, if you were to approve the variance, um, we'd appreciate possibly language in the resolution just saying that you know, the massing is approved regardless of whether, it's you know, the structures shown on the drawings are considered by DOB to be yeah. a 10th floor. Okay. Um, and then we also just wanted to note that 
we and our financial analyst um, acknowledge the comment from Commissioner Ollie Brown regarding the uh, evaluation of the outdoor space. Thank you. And I just want to note that um, an E designation has been placed on the site um, as of, I think, like yesterday yeah, or something like that. Sort of yeah. Okay. So I would, are there any speakers on this? I'd like to make a motion to close. Chair Paulina? Aye. Vice Chair Kingston? Aye. Commissioner Montanez? Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. Um, and a motion to grant. Chair Perlmutter? Aye. Vice Chair Hinkson? Aye. Commissioner Montanez? Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. Thank you very Thank you much. Very much. Feel better. <laughs> Item number 197115BZ, 548 West 22nd Street, Manhattan. Okay, um, I believe they're asking to adjourn this. Um, is anyone here from the applicant? Oh, yeah. You're here. Yeah. Thank you. Good afternoon, Commissioners. West Sale Bahia representing the applicant. Mm -hmm. So you wanted to adjourn this, is that correct? Yes. There was a letter, I don't know if all the commissioners yeah. received it. It was sent after close of business yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, the applicant heard the board's concerns, uh, also wasn't able to get the experts that they, the board requested yesterday to appear today, and based on that, uh, has requested an adjournment. Okay. So there is some work to be done on this. So thinking plus Mr. Klein will probably want to review the materials. Um, so what are we thinking, maybe September 27th in order to do this, to come oh, back? Yeah, that so would, that would mean, yeah. Everybody time to do right. the thing. So that would mean a submission from you, um, let's say by, uh, let's just do, see if we can do the math here. August 31st submission from the applicant, and then a response by the Opposition by say September, well, it depends, 14, and then either you submit, either you forego a submission opportunity, and then you could come back the 27th. You could come for a hearing on the 27th. If you want to be heard, um, if you want to submit in response, then we'd have to push this off because it's not enough time for us to review the, all the materials. And uh, we would like the opportunity to respond. So, so when would that leave us? What's the 14th? Oh, are you here on the 14th? You're not here on the 14th. Uh, we need Commissioner Otley Brown. Yeah, and are you here the weekend of the 15th? Are you here before? Like, for instance, if we put it on the 18th, would you have the time to review it or you would? As long as I can review it ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah. This is on October? Mm hmm. This is, yeah, October. So if we could put it on for the 18th, which would mean um, an opportunity. Okay, so let's go back again. I, I, I apologize. That this October 18th sounds very far in the, in the future. I, I think we would like to figure out a way to work with the September 27th date. Okay, so then we go back again. So if you submit by August 31st, and the reason I'm saying August 31st is I think you need that much time to improve the application um, so I don't want to make it tighter mm -hmm. um, and don't know what your holiday plans <laughs> are uh, and then opposition submits well, I'll be patrolling the catering hall so, That's <laughs> what, so you can write while you're patrolling the catering hall um, then September 14th for opposition That's, I don't know how to do this faster so we, we, we we can forego formal opposition and formal rebuttal and then we will rebut. Do it and, here. And, okay, and so let's do it like that. Okay. So opposition submits on the 14th of September and you come to us on the 27th of September for continued hearing. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so are we, uh, are we doing second poll again? Yeah. Architects on here. That's on the train, just train station.
Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, afternoon. Yeah, that's fine. We'll start at one o'clock. We have to adjourn to the afternoon calendar, which will be the first case. Yes. Yeah. Sure, that's fine. Mm -hmm. On the way. It's actually the same architect for my afternoon calendar case. Okay. Yeah. There that's how it works. Oh, wait. I just got to, he's walking over, right? <laughs> <laughs> From the train. From the train. Yeah, which train? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we're done with the morning then. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> this first at one. Yeah. Otherwise. Tell them to walk people slowly. People are going to disperse now. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're, we're, going to try. Try. we're adjourning to 1 o'clock. We'll resume with the second call and the new cases from the calendar. Yeah. All right. I don't want 15 minutes right. for lunch. Mm -hmm. Ready to go? Good afternoon. This is Board of Sanders and Appeals Public Hearing for August 2nd, 2016. We'll begin the zoning calendar, second poll item, item number 17, 333 14 BC, 23 323 East 5th Street, Brooklyn. Good afternoon. Thank you for second calling this. As you are aware, our architect is now here. We did attend your executive session, or actually had somebody attend and watch the tape last night. We saw your comments. Regarding the side yards, at the last hearing, there was a question to submit the two step process argument, and we would potentially get some feedback I understood and we hadn't heard back. I was hoping that we could discuss this today. Mm. You want to respond? So uh, there's been discussion internally. I think that we're still uh, evaluating your submission on the side yards. Um, I know that your other the case that you submitted that is on for uh, two weeks from now, two years from now. I don't remember. 13. 13. Yeah. The Ocean Parkway case? Oh. I, I believe we may be talking about two different things. This, this submission, your side of submission is made in the Ocean Parkway case. Also in yes this and case. no, but this also in this case, but we're also talking about the two-step argument, which was not part of that oh, other two-step Ocean Parkway. Not, that was on this case apartment. solely. Okay. Right, right. Well, that was <laughs> no, that absolutely had nothing to do with you. Okay. I, I apologize. No, 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 no. Right, you didn't. No, the two-step argument was another look at how to argue that that the side yard setbacks can be reduced. Um, in the in my old days of appearing, of doing a lot of work before DOB, we often used to make two-step arguments. Uh, there were famous cases of if you can do it in two steps, you should be able to do it in one step. And sort of in the ancient old days, that was accepted and then at a certain point DOB said well then do it in two steps if you can do it in two steps so I don't see how what isn't isn't legal um, under the board's interpretation of the law um, to be done can be can be um, supplanted by a two-step argument so if department of, and, and if department of buildings indeed allows the, ex, the straight line extension and the reduction in five feet, I, I don't actually know whether they would do that um, in, a, in one step, um, the first step. Um, but in any event, I just don't see how we can ignore what the law states, uh, even if the outcome might be the same, and I don't know it would be the same, even if it might be the same, if it was handled in two steps. So, um, and then the other part of it was, uh, let's see, the the rear yard also. Um, though it was the, sorry, the second floor at the rear yard. Right. So well, the I second Mr. floor. Mr. is here to address that in part of the aspect. Good afternoon, Commissioner Palmer, Commissioners. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, a second call on this. I, I was here a few minutes late uh, earlier. So as far as the backyard, in reference to sorry, oh, Salvatore Vincenti, I apologize. Um, I'm the architect for the job. So um, as far as the backyard is concerned, we, I went personally myself. I looked in people's side yards like uh, trespassing, if you will, and uh, <laughs> tried to find something. And the only thing I found was a couple of people which had a one-story extension. Uh, large one story extension almost all the way to the back. As far as second story is concerned, I could not find except for a few on Avenue W. Um, there's one, I believe it's 20, and the other one is almost on the lot line. And there's another one on East 5th, 
all the way at the end, 22, 29, I think it is. Um, I'll find out the, uh, oh, the address is uh, 2299. It almost goes all the way to the edge on one side. It's an irregular lot. Be that as it may, I try to cut it back. I cut it back a few feet. Um, two feet. Uh, just two, two feet. Two. Few. Three is two. A few and two is a couple. Okay. Well, I, <laughs> in good in good faith that uh, you know I'm trying to work with the board and uh, trying to reach a happy medium for both the board and my client. So so the thing is, it's not about a happy medium. It's making the urbanism argument. So there are other cases where you and other applicants have made an argument that the neighborhood context can support the second story addition. But there are times when you can't. Every single block isn't going to support that argument. So when you can't support it, and we have to make that finding, then you have to you have to make a, you, you need to make accommodations. You need to pull back. And so you have to look at your program. You have to look at what you're doing, for instance, at the attic level. For instance, the argument in favor of the height, I thought was persuasive. So since, the, since you have height, then you have an opportunity for a bedroom. You have a lot of bedrooms already up there, but you have an opportunity for a bedroom up there. There's a way to compensate for the reduction in the depth that is responsive to the neighborhood. There's a mass, there's a, there's an architectural solution. I, d I understand. And, and you need to, and you need to respond to that and not just like dig your heels in and say, you know, somehow or other we'll imagine that it fits within the neighborhood character when even you can't find the character, right? I, I, I understand what you're saying. The only thing is that, again, and I understand if the neighbor, when we speak about neighbor, once again, I know we spoke about this last time, it's not just one block. One block over, the neighbor has a 20 foot rear yard. And clearly it's the same community. That is the neighborhood. In, 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 it, in fact, that is the neighbor. I understand that this block does not have that yet. And because it's out of the subdistrict, obviously that's why we're here. If we were within the subdistrict, we would not be here. Um, I mean, I could probably reduce it a little bit more, perhaps, but, uh, you know, maybe, you know, just for the sake of go moving forward and almost coming to an end on this particular, I know we've been here before, uh, perhaps, uh, okay, you know, we can times. talk about what that reduction would be. Yeah, so I, I think that it's, it's not just to try to make a little effort. If, I mean, we've been here too many times in this application. This, well, this is the fourth year and with one adjournment. So um, you have to be responsive to the board's analyses. Otherwise, I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm at the point where I just want to close this. We'll bring it to a vote when we decide on the other one so that they're at the same time. And if you want to make a submission in the meantime that is significantly different, um, that's responsive to the board's comments, then go right ahead and then maybe we'll reopen. But at this point, I can't keep going on with this. Can I ask you for one more hearing, please? How about this? Yes. Because I, do, I don't want this to be this ad nauseum conversation. We'll close. If you choose to submit something which we find sub responsive, we'll reopen. But know that if it's not responsive, we're going to vote the next time. And so far, you haven't made the findings. So that's never a good sign. OK. OK. Well, what about the side yard? Uh, what, so is the, what is your position on that? The, the position on, of the board is that the, the board does not have the authority to waive the combined, the aggregated side yard rule. That's the position of the board. I believe that Mr. Schneckenberger just said that the board was actually still evaluating that side yard argument a moment ago. We've we reviewed your submission, um, and the board is, staff has advised the board that the side yards cannot be reduced. So, are there any comments from commissioners? Are there any speakers on this? So with that understanding, with those directions, I'd like to make a motion to close. Chair Frenlitter? Aye. Vice Chair Hickson? Aye. Commissioner Montanez? Aye. Commissioner Brown? Aye. 
and um, what's the date again? And put it on for decision on September 13th. And as I say, if in the interim you want to make a submission that's responsive, we'll reopen and consider it, but it has to be responsive. Okay. Do I need a submission date? Or? Um, yeah, um, the 13th would mean <coughs> the 17th. It's a little tight, but 17th of August submission date. 17th of August. We could, you could give an extra week, maximum of the 24th of August, because that's actually less time than we normally have. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. New cases, item number 1-176-14-BZ, 1981 East 9th Street, Brooklyn. Good afternoon. I'm Harold Weinberg, the applicant. However, uh, under my current concomitant circumstances, I want Mr. Frank Toledo, who's an RA, to participate. And I'll sit down because I have to. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. A few comments from the executive session yesterday I'd like to address. The community board recommendation I received today, I will forward it to the board. Um, what they say? They recommend it. Okay. They were in favor. It was a unanimous vote. Okay. Now, second, uh, rear yard. The Department of Buildings brought up the rear yard, even though it is as of right in the sub district, they brought up um, an objection with it, so we just figured, just put it in there. Okay. If you wish I to, uh, if you want me to revise the denial, I will. However, yeah, we don't need you to revise a denial, but we're not going to waive something that doesn't need to be waived. I'm not right? asking to waive. Okay. Okay. Um, as far as it complying with the sub district of the Ocean Parkway special uh, s special zoning district, we'll provide a uh, zoning calculation sheet with the additional verification that shows it does comply. Okay. There is one on the drawings, though. You know, you do it also on drawing? the drawing where you're showing that whatever the height regulation is and it shows the height of the building and that it complies and what the regulation is and all that so we can read it along with the drawing. Oh, it's simple enough. It's easier. Then okay. I um, admit that our, our BSA sheet is quite a difficult thing to fill out for specific projects. Okay. <coughs> now the FAR of 1.5, mm -hmm. yes it is generous but this is a 2,000 square foot lot. The existing building is 18 feet wide. This is not a 40 or a 50 by 100 lot, not even a 30 by 100 lot. There is not much room to work with here. The proposed is 1.7, which comes out to an additional 329 square feet, which is not much. It's a bedroom. It's a bedroom with a closet and a bathroom. Yeah. Okay. We're proposing three bedrooms on the second floor. It's a three bedroom house. One family. Mm -hmm. so, let's, so what do we do about the fact that the house is really, appears to be really big? So, you know, you have findings you have to make, right? Okay. So, and if we don't have a lot of examples, we don't have any examples of, as far as we can tell, legal houses that are exceeding the 1.5, Right. A while back, we the other submitted ones don't seem to have had permits to be that big. Okay. A while back, we submitted um, on a radius diagram surrounding homes that are one and two family that have an FAR of 1.5 or greater. It was at the request of the board to indicate just the one family homes. Now, special permit regulations apply to one and two family homes. Oh, so there were one and two family, there were two family homes that had 1.5. Greater 1. than 1.5 and greater. There are four of them directly across the street. So show us, I, I'm sorry if that was how you, it was the instruction, but if you could show us where those want those greater than 1.5 we'll houses built pursuant to some kind of approval, not illegal. I'll do the research. Right. right. So if they're pre-61, that's one thing, or pre-whatever the date of this zoning district is, that's one thing. All right, we'll right, verify but that. if they don't have permits okay. or a BSA action, then it doesn't count. Now, there was another comment about uh, 
all two applications that are on file mm -hmm. for this building. Mm -hmm. One of them was for underpinning, and the other one was for an interior renovation. Once the underpinning and the renovation were done, the owner changed his mind and said, you know something, I need to build, I need to enlarge, and that is why we're here. Did you supply us with the uh, DOB drawings? I can and I will. Thank you. Okay. Now, there was a question about the photo key. I'll look into that and I'm sure it's just a small revision mm -hmm. as far as placing where the uh, photo was taken from. Right. The sections that were submitted will revise them as well. Another question was about the two-foot side yard or the narrow side yards, and like, uh, how do the guys get in there? <laughs> short people working there. Short people, short arms. Vertically challenged. <laughs> they do make scaffolds that are 18 and 20 inches in width. They, make they also have what about people that are 18 and 20 inches. <laughs> well, in they'll be guys my size. <laughs> With no elbow room. There you go. So work very slowly, work very no, carefully. Where there's a will, there's a way. But How this is a method of a method of construction that is the contractor will do this. It will be a stucco exterior. Mm -hmm. It is not uh, very complicated. It could also be accommodated or accomplished by a hanging scaffold, which are also 18 inches wide. Mm -hmm. Again, where there's a will, there's a way. As far as the adjoining property owners grant, granting permission, the owner has discussed that with them already, and they will grant him access. So what is the actual distance between your zero lot line and the owner? I believe it's three feet on it's, the north side. Yeah, it's three on the north. And it's three feet on the south side. Oh, so you think it's three, not two. It looked like two to me. That's All why right. I'm asking. Okay. So there is ample room. In fact, a Baker scaffold, which is a standard scaffold of the industry, is 29 inches. So that will more than accommodate, uh, more than accommodate in a 36 inch space. Okay. Now, what was the other question? About 1979 East 9th, that's the building to the north. Right, just adjacent. Okay. Was it enlarged legally? Um, there the is. The records don't seem to indicate that. There's still two alt, there's an alt two that's still open. Yes, there is. And a couple of ECBs, one for an illegal curb cut. <laughs> um, that is not my client. <laughs> I am not here for them. No, but it's just to use it as a guide for this house? No, I didn't. Yeah, okay. Because you will see on my radius diagram where I have the 1.5 and better FARs, it is not highlighted. And, it, and you didn't use it in terms of what your rear yard looks like? Not at all. Okay. Just checking because they have an extension. Well, they have from 1998 and 1999, there are three applications filed. One was to do an alteration and a renovation and enlarge. The other two was supersede mm -hmm. and as built conditions and so on. They are open applications and have nothing to do with us. Okay, so the, but the, one of the reasons for bringing it up was the, you're, con, you're proposing um, this, the front yard to set back to be pulled forward of what's typical of the block. Okay, well. That's the concern. The zoning requires a 10 foot front yard. Understood. I have an existing 10 foot two front yard. I am maintaining that. I do not need a special permit to go up as long as I'm within that front yard. Mm -hmm. My problem is with the side yards. No, but you're asking for additional floor area. And if you didn't get additional floor area, you arguably wouldn't choose to build forward of that line, right? Because you're built, where, where do you build that one? So in other words, when, when we grant additional floor area, some of it's going to a place that we have to decide is within neighborhood context, right? And okay. so, um, Often we talk about the front yard setback because we look at whether it's consistent with the neighborhood character and whether you might do something with this proposal that in some way alters neighborhood character, right? There, yes, you're right. However, there are some buildings on the block okay. that do have a 10-foot front yard, two stories. There are some buildings across the street that have 10-foot front yards, 
two stories. Okay, so that's what we need you to I will verify establish. That. Okay, and not verbally establish, visually, no, give us visuals, I'll document right? It. Okay. Now, the radius diagram showing the FAR, that you're one or two family upgrade. homes, we've, I think we've gone over everything. Yeah, okay, that's correct. Okay. Any other comments, questions? No? Are there any speakers on this? Well, your chart is going to show the um, proper height and perimeter wall height. What I'll do is I'll we'll measure it with a laser. No, no, no. I mean, I'm talking about that I had questioned whether the perimeter wall height and building height that you are requesting is actually what's applicable in the subdistrict. Okay. Yeah. That, that's all part of doing the zoning analysis for the subdistrict because we didn't see any references to the subdistrict regulations with the exception of the rear yard. There are a, quite a few CFOs that I, you know, I've, I've looked into it. Uh, issued on that block for the adjoining buildings and applications for the adjoining buildings that all are within 28 to 30 to 31 feet. Visually, you can see my ridge line is no higher than any of the other buildings. So it's a matter of when the applications were approved or who prepared them. Uh, I'm asking for nothing more than what I have now. I am not adding another story. I'm not going above any of the adjoining buildings or their heights. We're maintaining what we have. Okay. So then you have existing either non-compliances non or their compliances. That's what we don't understand. Do we, does the building comply with the Ocean Parkway we'll regulations? That. That's what we want to know. Okay. Right? We'll clarify that. Whether it's existing non-compliance or, um, or compliance because we don't have any authority to waive most of those things, okay. right? Okay. Very well. And the photo he mentioned? And the photo he mentioned that already. Yes. Okay, I got that. Did I already ask, are there speakers on this application? Okay, so what do you think in terms of timing to do this? Three weeks. Three weeks, so I think we're still, do we have any more room on the 20th? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, so, Put it on for continued hearing on September 20th with a submission on August 31st, which is your three weeks. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Item number two, 4 15 BC, 119 Webster Avenue, Brooklyn. Good afternoon, Amanda Ayanadi on behalf of the applicant. I'm also joined today by Rabbi Rosebaum, the school administrator, as well as project architect, Ralph Albanese. Um, in response to a couple of concerns at yesterday's executive review session, um, to clarify the number of students and staff in the, in the proposed school, it's about 100 students and 12 staff, including eight teachers, one principal, one secretary, <coughs> one school manager, and one librarian. So it's not 130 kids and no. 15 staff? No. Okay, so please go through what all the materials, I think it might have actually been the EAS. Okay. Um, but go through all the materials and make sure you've got consistency, otherwise, okay. you know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, and in response to comments made regarding the plans, the proposed plans are going to be revised to show sprinklering throughout the entire building. It will also note the fire alarm system. It, they will also note that smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors will be hardwired. Um, the cellar access is going to be moved towards Seton Avenue, uh, Seton Place, so it does not go underneath the proposed exterior stairs. It'll be separate and apart from them. Um, Sorry, the, say that again? What's going there on? is a comment that um, the cellar access was going beneath the uh, proposed exterior stairwell. No, it was that the proposed exterior stairwell in the side yard mm -hmm. there was cons the comment was about storing trash under the stairs 
Okay. Not allowed. There's there's no there's also not going to be any trash stored there. It's going to be stored in the cellar in a refrigerated area, okay. and it will be brought out to the street um, when to upon the yeah you know, pickup. Right. Okay. Um. Okay. The rooftop play area will be used between 12:30 and 1:30 p.m. Um, the fence will be moved to be shown behind the parapet wall. It'll also be revised on the elevation to show that. And the parapet itself will be dimensioned. Um, in terms of, okay, we have the garbage. In terms of deliveries, um, the deliveries are gonna be made approximately three times per week by a small minivan. Um, the rabbi expected it to be between six and seven in the morning, but he can narrow that time. And it's scheduled uh, directly by him and he controls when they come. Um, regarding the, there's the no parking zone proposed on um, seat in place. Regarding traffic, there'll be two buses that come at 8.55 a.m. and two buses that come at 9.55 a.m. And then pickup will be two buses at 2.45 p.m. and two buses at 4.30 p.m. Um, How many the students are in each bus? How many students are in each bus? Just so exactly people do if you want to speak, please come to the mic and state your name. My name is Rabbi Rosenbaum. I am both commissioners and Madam Chair. It's when we're going to move in, as well in the new building, we're going to have to organize each child and every bus. When we are now located at this location, we try to make the trip should be the shortest possible. It's hard to know until when we move in. They call the children, we divide it into buses, so we can see about 30 well, children in a bus. How, oh, 30? Yes. In each bus? And you're going to have four buses in the morning? It's, it's two. It, they call the children, and they, they, they are split into in two buses, 9 o'clock come, and two buses. So these are large buses. They're not the small school buses. It's one small one and one large one. Well, because um, according to the EAS, I believe it's at least 40% of the students walk. That's so right. it should, you know. yes. He also, that, that we need to revise that because right. he yes. estimates about 90% of the students come by bus. Okay. Only those, only those who miss the bus, they come walking. Usually all the children come with the bus. They've been dropped off, it takes about two, three minutes, they're off the bus and then Bus leave or park. So how many kids fit in the smaller bus? Smaller bus is about 20 children. Okay. So you'd have 50 kids handled at the 9 a.m. and another 50 handled at the 10 a.m. Is that right. the idea? To be exactly. I mean, it's a bad. Something like can't that. Can't say until right until they move. We're gonna have to reorganize the transportation. How it's gonna be done? It's a new. It's a new location. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So then your EAS has to be completely right. revised. Mm -hmm. So will you be having a nursery or is this just kindergarten? The nursery they refer to three year olds and the kindergarten is four year olds. It's really not a typical baby like baby nursery. Mm -hmm. They just refer to the three year old class as right. there's class. no drop offs and pick ups, no strollers, no carriages, no all come on the bus, they can escort the building. So, and just curious, so the buses travel around and the kids are brought by their parent onto the bus and strapped into whatever, some kind of a seat on the bus, at right? House, at, at the home, they're picked yes. up at home, okay. And then the kids are let off kind of a couple at a time from the bus. Yes. Okay. Okay. We had other questions you want to keep going okay. with those? Um, oh, I think we had another question that the rabbi could answer is, are you maintaining two, the two sites? Is this like an additional site? Or are you? Now, well, we want to be moving in our, we're renting our place. Mm -hmm. So we want to, we bought this place and hopefully we want to have this place approved so we can move in without like to pay rent. So this becomes the alter, the replacement right. for the other place. Right. Okay. okay. So you'll have, you currently have two. You're going to continue to have two? Right. Okay. 
Maybe with the time we'll have three, four, five. Okay, so one place will continue to operate, yes. and this place, this new place, will replace the current right. one. Yeah. Okay, the rented one. Okay. You want to continue with the sure. responses? Um, Thank you. So, Thank you. Um, Ralph is here to address um, the need for both exterior staircases um, as well as the handicapped access and enclosure of the stairwells. Mm -hmm. Other stuff. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Ralph P. Albanese. I'm an architect. I superseded the original architect of record. Uh, so these are not your, you didn't generate these that's, designs? That's correct. Oh, okay. I'm having input now, but it, it's not my work. Uh, what The main reason why we would like to have the exits outside is Simply, it takes up too much room inside the building, and we have to create hallways connecting the, the uh, classes to get to the doors. This way, all it is is you, you, you go through one classroom, which your door will be left unlocked at all times, and you exit right out the door. Also, so there is a comment yesterday about why the two are necessary but it could just function with one um, no we understand you need two means of egress but you have a central stair mm -hmm. why yes. isn't a central plus the one in the side yard good enough um, if, the board this is kind of a code question right. for, forgive me for this type of answer but with, you're talking about the minimum would be one more. The, I'm sorry, the minimum what? Stairs, egress. Yeah. In this case, the rabbi wants to go a little further, basically. Mm -hmm. and no, actually, have, that's not his answer, so no, let's, let's no. hear from in, the rabbi. In order, to, in order to only use one staircase in the side yard, there would need to be a hallway because the people on the other side of the building that didn't have a direct exit would have to cross over the second classroom, which is not permitted by code. There would have to be a hallway created, which would take space away from that side's classroom. Well, the teacher's room isn't permitted by code to egress through the classroom either. That's an occupied space going into an occupied space. Not to mention office number three, for example. I, I think I think it's the distance. It's the distance no, it's not the from distance. the classroom to the other no, side. No, it's of the, building. the rule about going through an occupied space which might be on fire. Um, and then um, there's, there's also, an, you also have an existing fire escape, right? Mm -hmm. right. The, I don't know whether the fire department would let, allow that because it's really a residential, but you, all, you also do have a fire escape. And it's a school. It's a, no, I no. The existing fire escape is related to a residential use. I just don't know what the rules are about reuse of a fire escape. Yeah, no, but there it is. It's still on the building, is a point. Um, but so, so the first part of it is I don't understand how even one of those side yard fire uh, fire stairs is allowed because you're required to go through an occupied space to get to it, um, and. It just seems like it's too many stairs, none of which are arguably legal, except for that central stair, which could be made legal. Um, understanding that you want to keep, have more space on the interior. But it's like they're, they're the alteration type, whatever it was, drawings, two drawings, um, showed an interior set of stairs that had a corridor that connected to them. So that obviously was meaning code. So I don't understand how you think how the architect who prepared those decided that that meets code and this meets code. And then the other part of it is you, um, yeah, so that's one part of the question. I had a meeting with Ira Glock and the commissioner, 
and he explained me that we need to have each classroom have two means of egress. Correct. Mm -hmm. So if we leave the middle steps, he has no problem that each classroom has a, and the teacher's room too to the middle stairs. Each classroom has another means of egress when we build just the two sides stairs. The teacher's room, they have middle side and they have the fire escape at the outside, which is not for children that room. It's for adults. You have to go through an it's office to get everyone. to it. It's not allowed. No, not an office. In yeah, the front straight, of the building. Straight, it's straight. It's there's the fire escape is open to the office and open to the teacher's room. Oh, not according to the drawing. Yeah, it doesn't show that at the all. The drawings show it on two windows. That's a two windows. That's that's the two windows. One window is in the teacher's room. One window is in the office. That's not the way it's shown on the plan. The plans don't yeah. show that. It's shown on the two office windows. That's totally not right. Allowed. That's okay. And then we can so get the like right. This is what it is. That's it. no, no, no. The ear is supposed to be closed. That's the way it's going to be. Here's the wall. This is the wall here, and the wall here. Yeah. 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 It's not, it's not the way it's so, so here's the thing. Right. The fire escape, if it's allowed as right. a means of egress, I have no idea. If it's allowed as a means of egress from this kind of a use where you've got tiny children and teachers, and well, I, I don't know. That, that the office is not for, it's, it's, it's for adults. Not for no, I understand that, but the fire escape is there as a, sec, as a means of egress, right? I don't know anything about what the buildings department considers the usability of an existing fire escape that was built for multiple dwelling purposes to be used for a school egress. But you have the existing fire escape. You have a stair proposed in the side yard setback. You have that central stair, and it seems to me, we, we all talked about this, that the stair that's in the front of the building really isn't the right thing to be doing for the neighborhood. You have that whole continuity of the wall with all of the buildings on that row identical, and you're building an institutional thing in the front of the building, which is really unsightly. So it seems to me there, with all of those means of egress, you should be able to qualify, but you really need the Department of Buildings and maybe work with the fire department to um, to accomplish this. You should, with those three means of egress, you should be able to accomplish which this. Three? You have a fire escape, you have the interior fire stair, which maybe needs to be modified in order to do this, but still, and you have that second, um, the stair in the side yard. With those three means, it seems to me that you should be able to come to an agreement. Uh, all the three egress is in the is in the back that side of the half of the building. You try all the all the ways. I mean, the neighborhood. All, we got a lot of letters from the neighbors that there are. I, I spoke to the neighbors. There are it doesn't harm the neighbors. We got we built nice and neat to make an, an egress to go outside. I mean, it's it, it, the main it's, entrance will be in the front. The building is tiny. Right. It doesn't need so many sources of egress, but you need to make you need to address the law so that you get adequate egress from classroom number five, which is on Webster Avenue. I mean, that's really what you're talking about. But you, what you're talking about is building a separate stair just to egress classroom number five. Number five and the all one the below. Three stores. All yeah, the three stores. but those classrooms at the front, a separate right. staircase just no, to egress. All the way, all the way to the left. Sure, there is. Is so, all we try. We, we, we spend a lot of days and months to work this out. Because the building is tiny, we do request. I want to say. I want to say a word. Can I say some? Yeah, please. It was. It was one time an elder person, a very smart person, and it was his doors were always open to consult. It was a young fellow, knocked on his door. He was like a little wise guy, and he figured he'll he'll get it. Well, he'll get him with a, with a question, he won't get the answer. Everyone was looking at him, he came into that other person, a smart person, and he came in with a small, tiny bird in his hand. Small, tiny bird. And he shows it to that other person. You know what I have here in my hand? I have a bird. Can you tell me if this is live or dead? 
So he had intent to oversmart him. If he's going to say it's live, give it a squeeze, and it's choking it's dead. If he's going to say it's dead, let it fly, and it's choking. He's going to oversmart him. So can you tell him is this alive or dead? So that the other person waited a minute and he said, listen, you know what? It's in your hands. Depends what you'll do. You'll squeeze it, you'll choke it. You won't squeeze it, it will lie. Now, to be honest, we have sat down on this. Believe me, we don't want to build those set of stairs in the front. Just we don't have money, with what to do with the money. It's, it, it costs a lot of money if you don't have, but there is no way, because it's a small building, and the zoning allows us to have a school there. We have approved plans already for to have a school there. But it's only the, the plans, what they're telling us to do is taking away, having a building from stairs, but no classrooms. So we can, if, if, the, if we can make small steps, if we, we won't make it large, we make it, the minimum as the code asks for to make it nice to match the character of the, of the block and we'll, we'll accommodate it. This building was, I, I don't know if you know, many, many years was this building a hangout. Low people, drug addicts, and we, we, we took it over and make it nice and be good neighbors and have good neighbors. The whole community will have a benefit of this building. Now, I, I, if you would sit down and see, you'll see that there's no way you start to make hallways to get there. That means you, you have a building from hallways and steps with no classrooms. So, so can I ask you a question? Yes, please. Uh, are you an architect? Not an architect, but I'm a designer. I'm sitting with architects, yes. No, no, no. So the reason that I ask is because you brought in a new architect of record. I don't know how long he's been on the job, but um, Normally, the job of the architect is to figure out how to come up with a solution that both meets code and meets programmatic requirements. So I don't get the impression that this architect has worked on this project for very long. Maybe he can come up with a solution that's responsive to our concerns and also meets code. Because that it just seems like he should be given a chance to solve this in a way that does all of those things. Because the other concern we have is about the ramp that's on the sidewalk. Are you going to be applying for a revocable consent? So that's city-owned property and you're building a ramp and it steps... approved by the DOB. No, no, DOB doesn't decide that. They approved the ramp. They made to approve it, but they don't have the authority to grant you a use of city-owned property. You have to actually go to city planning? DOT. DOT, DOT. so yeah. to DOT to get that approval. Okay, so I, I want to note that, that they do have a, a DOB approval for for this the, these these stairs and the, the no they don't the, the, not for the exterior no no I'm sorry they have, the work permit. they have the work permit no they have a work permit for a building but, with interior stairs yeah their uh, stairs are okay. inboard that was my question from yesterday but why did that work yeah. There's, there's, there may be some question, but I, I yeah. think what I would recommend. No, that was a self-certified set of drawings. Oh. The second, the second, the first, the second the original. First one, yeah. I see. But yeah. the second the one. The told me that he has, a, he has the authority to approve four, four inches on, on the property. I, I would recommend that you, you sit with your architect and go through and either explain in great detail uh, why these these stairs have to be where they're at and and sort of how it all works because it sounds like there was so, so you had an impression that there was a an exit where yes. the plans are not showing an exit I, I think that that would be helpful and then for Amanda uh, check on the on the um, if this is if the ramp is truly on the city owned property then then it that DOB doesn't have the authority to grant that. It but is it, not city owned it property. Is, is, oh, absolutely. Do you have a? Do they have a survey that shows that? Yeah, the it's building is built the property the lot. Line. Okay, well, it's on the other side. Yeah, it's, it's clear. No, it's, yeah. Okay. The building built to the lot line. We we actually can't. Yeah, we can't um, do that. We can't that. move That's ahead unless we know that you have the authority, the right to build on city owned yeah. property for your access. And then my other question is. 
which also is an answer, which is why uh, the architect is important in this conversation, is the building is not handicapped accessible, and you're building a new use, <coughs> and you're for, for public purpose, you know, for children in the community, right? And they can only get to the first floor. So, and, and since you're dividing this up, I'm assuming by age group, you can't say that you're making an accommodation on the first floor for all those kids because three-year-olds are in a different group than five-year-olds or whatever your highest age group is, right? So, um, so I have another problem. That's another code problem. We have an answer to this. Okay. He was proposing designating an area of the first floor for handicapped children if they were to arise and he would know whether handicapped children was enrolled in the school year, you know, early before the school year and make arrangements for them um, within one of the classrooms on the first floor to be taught one-on-one -on -one or in a small group if there was multiple. I don't know anything about whether that's a, a, what's considered a reasonable accommodation. That's a Department of Buildings and Mayor's Office call. Um, we, we can't decide whether that's a reasonable accommodation. I look at, you know, you have that side yard again, you can put an elevator in the side yard. I just don't, yeah. They give a letter from Lupin. Mm -hmm. No, but that's what I mean. It's the mayor's office yeah. that decides whether that's a, an acceptable approach. That's not something we decide. Um, I, I would encourage you to, to sort of resolve that prior to any any actions here. Um, what you don't want is to have us approve a set of plans and then uh, and then be sent back to us to put an el an elevator in sometime. Right. That would be just a waste of your time. Yeah. yeah. Believe me, all all commissioners, we have said I did not want to build any stairs. We yeah. went through it. Ralph Oben is a little bit the former architect a lot with this. We try to block them here and there. It remains no building to me. It remains a building with stairs below classroom. Now, under Adam Chair, Adam Chair, if there is no other way to have a decent classroom, I would request and please, please, I urge very much, allow us to build a nice set of stairs in the home. If there is no other way. If there will be, I will try to sit down. Okay, so let's put it this way. So I'm relying very much on the architect and his skills and design ability and all of that to um, come up with a solution that's more reasonable and would respond to our comments, right? So the first set of comments are that we don't understand the need for all the stairs, right? This, so therefore, let's hear what he can come up with to maybe reduce the quantity of stairs. If there's no way to reduce the quantity of stairs, maybe there's a way to come up with a staircase that is less of an imposition on the front of the building. Because right now, it's just an industrial stair hanging out in the front yard like no one cares what it looks like. There are, there are architectural solutions that are possible that I'd like the architect to look at. I mean, I personally can think of a few of them. And so if I can, he can, Meaning right? Say what kind of we stairs can. to be outside? Well, you know, I, concepts for how to solve this problem. That's what architects are for. They come up with concepts. So let him do that, okay? Before you, you beg. <laughs> okay. Um, it's really looking at, for me, it's looking really at the circulation in the building. And right now, with the two stairs outboard, um, it, it looks as if it was, well, let's just move them out there. It'll make it easier for, you know, whatever we want to do in the middle. And in the previous iteration with the stairs inboard, you actually had tighter circulation and you might have the opportunity to actually make that work. So I would like to see the architect really look at circulation through the building and what is really needed because I my suspicion is is that it's somewhere in the middle that you've got an inboard stair and then you talk about how you deal with the other side of the building but I I think that you you're not accommodating a lot of people in this building so um, I you know there's a, there's a lot of circulation devoted to a very small group of people yeah. and I think you can tighten it up and that will allow you to 
um, perhaps bring at least one of those stairs inside. Right. And then the last thing I want to point out is right now, the drawings may be inaccurate, but there's a fire escape shown landing right at the step. So when you pull the drop ladder down, you don't want to be the one who's dropping down because you're going to crash into the steps. That's not allowed and nor is it safe. So um, that needs to be rethought. I don't know if that means, I mean, one solution, for example, if the Department of Buildings would let you is to extend the st fire escapes. I don't know if the fire escapes are allowed. Said, no, they said it's not, not. Yeah, not right. right. Yeah, I don't think those fire escapes would be used because yeah, so maybe the they teachers just come would off. be taking care of the kids in right. the fire. Right. Every man for himself. Jump <laughs> <laughs> now. We, we had the old plans. We had something. We have sent in of the other plans, which were no good. We had approved plans, but we couldn't do nothing with it. We had the, the, the no. We, the we, we saw we them. Saw them. We have them. And we're looking at them. The yeah, ones with the two stairs thousand, on the thousand. inside. We're not saying you put all the stairs on the inside. We're saying maybe you don't. There's maybe there's a way. And again, I. This is what we. This is what I personally believe, being an architect and we have some other architects on the board, that architects can solve problems if you let them. So please let your architect try to solve the problem. I know that maybe the other one didn't, and I know that you think you've come up with all the solutions, but I'd like to see what the architect can come up with, given that he's here and he's hearing us, right? Um, so let's not try to design it in the air. Let's see what it does when you do it with pencil or computer. I will do so because I like to comply. Okay. I went. I spent a lot, a lot of money for architecture to find the design. I should not have to build, spend money to build those stairs outside. Mm -hmm. I put the money in the outside. I would rather put them in the inside. Right. I, I, this. Okay. I'll do it again. I'll do it again. I'll sit down because I like to comply. But believe me, from my deep heart, I spend it time and money and aggravation and dear and dear and dear and dear. To try to work it out. To try to work out. Okay. But believe me, it did not. The, the only solution is when I, I gave me a special appointment. He told me that he was an architect. He himself draws plan. We, we tried to twist it here and there. Then it, it came out that we are not losing a little bit, losing, losing a classroom because the code tells us that each staircase cannot be in there. It's supposed to be at least 40 inches. Okay. It's 40. What we understand. Okay. But well, then we'll do it anyway. <laughs> Yeah, but to try to actually yeah, do you it. have to and it seems that two stair staircases should be sufficient because I would like to see you know this is a school instead of it looking like a industrial building that you have landscaping in the front yard <laughs> and street trees it because it's a, it's it, it nice should it should have a residential there. character right. right. And because at the same time, you have to realize it's not just you on the inside of the building, it's your neighbors, it's the, outside, the community, right, and right. you need they to be respectful friends, of the community, right? So that's what we're trying to solve both things. We understand a, a school purpose is a very important one, but the, the community living with you is also important, right? So I just want to see if... I want the, if, you, if you remember, we had a community board. They all voted yes. for it. Yes. No, actually, you, they didn't all vote for it. That was actually the question. Well, they voted the approval. Okay. Approval is different than all yeah. voting. <laughs> you had <laughs> almost a split decision. You had seven opposed and eight abstaining, and the community board I was on, an abstention is a no vote. So you actually had 15 to 16. So that's <laughs> not exactly an overwhelming yes. Well, it's approved, after all. Well, that's technical. <laughs> And we also okay. received a number of objections by letter from people. Yes. They have well, they have collected a number of consents. We can we can submit to the board. Uh, Twenty along Webster, from uh, approximately a hundred and one Webster to one hundred and fifty something. Okay. okay. Um, so we will go back and look at the design of the building, while also um, you know keeping an eye on the permitted occupancy of each classroom so that way they can have um, the program space that they need and can accommodate the students, as many students as they can, but also look at the um, redesign of the building and possibly eliminate one of the exterior stairwells. Possible we'll do so. Okay. But if not possible, <laughs> you won't squeeze the bird. <laughs> 
So stop squeezing, right? <laughs> okay. So um, uh, what was I going to say? Okay. The, I we do I do have a comment here from Commissioner Shanda who. Um, isn't here and I neglected to read her comments yesterday and it just has to do with the parking issue so by having those two buses have that drop-off zone there's a loss of four parking spaces mm -hmm. so we just wanted to understand better what kind of an impact is that having on available parking in the neighborhood mm -hmm. um, that would be more like during the times and this and the two buses are being stored off-site yes they are and so if you could give us whatever your agreement is for the 709 Chester Street location. So when there, because the question was, since you only have drop off at nine o'clock and 10 o'clock and pick up at two o'clock and 2.45, then really does the, do those spaces need to be off limits for parking the whole time? Um, you know, I don't know if that's even viable because how do you kick people out of the spaces yeah, when they're parking no. illegally and all that stuff? But that was a question. So since you have your environmental consultant, if you could mm -hmm. just have... I think we had submitted a parking study about the loss of four spaces and the impact. Yes. Um, also, mm -hmm. the it would since the residential units are now being converted, there's actually extra 12 spaces on the street. Uh, there was two... The, the rabbi estimated two spaces per unit were being used by the residential tenants in that those little apartments everybody had two cars, Three cars. <laughs> <laughs> well i think that the mayor has to put a new rule car per family max yes yeah, see how that goes <laughs> <laughs> but there was a parking study that addressed the um, the loss of four street parking spaces that was submitted. Okay. No, okay. It was it was it, uh, to my to my attention. Well, our teachers don't count cars. They count the public, public transportation or yeah. the walking distance, and the children are being dropped off. Right. There's no we're not uh, taking off parking, and we didn't take away more parking space as it was before. They came less cars requesting for parking space. Because you're saying the residents of the building who had four or five cars each. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm kidding, hard. obviously. Yeah. Let's say they had yeah. one car. What were there? Sense of humor that out. There were, what, how many apartments were there? There were six. six. Six, okay, so six cars, and you're mm -hmm. eliminating four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so just something in your environmental if it doesn't already say that, because I don't remember. Okay. Um, all right. What else did we need? Anybody else? So, and and the statements that you made at the beginning, as you introduced, if you could get that all in, mm -hmm. and when you make your cover letter, to, just to be clear that that's what you're adding to the application, so we don't have to hunt for it, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Um, Anybody else? Any speakers. other speakers? Speak, you know, I know from us. Okay. okay. Are there any speakers on this? No. No. Okay. Okay. So, um, time to go back and maybe speak to the architect about how much time he needs. He's smiling like he's going to solve it. Let him solve it. That's what he does. <laughs> okay. So. I would say that at least three weeks. Oh, you have more. Yeah. Okay. What are we looking at now on the date? 27. 20 is too much already. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot. Okay, so how about this? A submission on September 7th. Okay. All right. Oh, no, it could, one, two, three. no, it could be September 14th. Sorry, sorry. Oh. Um, and, um, and then the hear this continued hearing on September 27th. Okay. That way you don't have to work over like a long holiday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank Item you. number three, 9415 BZ 16, right to left Street, Brooklyn. Lisa. Good afternoon, Commissioners. My name is Isa Kurasanchi. I'm the applicant for UFC gym. Uh, 
I attended the executive session yesterday and I heard some of the comments and concerns that you might have. And if I may take a few minutes uh, telling the, uh, the board about this building that uh, uh, I try to cover the comments as I go along. I was brought to this building about six, seven years ago by my client. At the time when I went to the building was uh, one open warehouse with two offices. And uh, what I noticed was the, the whole entire uh, warehouse was fully sprinkler. This is also indicated on uh, the CFO of uh, 1994 that it shows that the building is fully sprinkler. Ah, okay. Yes. And the, the intention of my client was to, uh, to uh, rent, to get a long-term lease on this building and subdivide it into smaller units and rent them out. The first uh, tenant which signed up a lease was the UFC and uh, the space that they went into was approximately 5,000 square feet. And uh, even at that time, one of the concerns that we had was the noise uh, uh, from the adjacent spaces that they were going to be rented out that they might complain about the noise. So uh, the back of the building is a masonry wall, approximately 8 to 12 inches of brick wall. And the front is old storefront, which is glass and is uniform throughout the whole. Uh, warehouse, uh, which was new. Uh, it was done after the warehouse uh, moved out. And of course we have the F train, uh, which constantly goes by and makes a lot of noise. However, the, the, the walls that we, we built on the sides as interior partition walls, we built them approximately eight inches uh, of um, uh, insulated walls. And we had the company coming from New Jersey, and they put uh, cellulose foam special uh, type of uh, uh, material that would reduce the noise. I don't think you could 100% eliminate it, but we did our best. And uh, for this interior you fit so out. So it's a foam insulation, is that what you're saying? Well, we have two layers of sheetrock, then we have the foam insulation, and then because the other tenants were not there, the space, so we didn't put in uh, sheetrock on, on the other side. side. Right, on, yeah. on either side. And then uh, when the spaces were rented out, I could tell you the, uh, there are about seven, eight tenants there. If you're facing the building, the first tenant is like a vitamin store is going to be. The second one is a drug store. The third one is a cafe eating, drinking establishment. The fourth one, which is adjacent to the right of the gym, is a medical spa. And then it's a gym. And then uh, we have adult daycare center. So when we came to uh, the spa people, they signed up. On the right hand side, the, the, the lease, they were very, also very concerned about the noise. So, on top of that, they built their own wall, which is also insulated. And it was all the way, and there's no cellar there, it's a slab on grade. So, and it's a one story building. So, we went, we insulated from slab all the way to the bottom of the joists, or the roof deck, you might say. So, they also uh, added about eight inches of insulation. And it's been about maybe six years, and there has not been any noise uh, complaints from either side. But the adult daycare center, which they just... I thought it opened in 2013. Which one? The, the, the UFC. Yeah, they were the first tenants, yeah. maybe three years ago. But um, the, day, the, the spa came after them. Ah, okay. And the adult daycare center, they just started August of 2015. They started. But adult daycare center, they, they have um, their uh, members coming in about roughly about 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning, and everybody leaves by 4.30. I've been to this UFC gym. I've been to the doll daycare. So I've been to all of them many, many, many times, at least maybe once a week, because there's always something that they want to ask me a question about. And uh, uh, the adult daycare center, they have no problem with them as far as the noise is concerned. And uh, uh, one issue with the parking, which was mentioned yesterday, uh, is that there are two buildings on the lot. One is a two-story building, and one is just one story. One story was always a warehouse. But the two-story building, uh, in 2000, uh, between, sometime between 1994 and 2011, which they received a CFO, uh, apparently, that's my understanding, that there was 17 parking spaces uh, 
four mentioned on this you were the previous to this one the current one and but when they built the two-story building the ambulatory they took that space away and they only provided five parking spaces so this warehouse about 22,000 square they, it, it never had any indoor parking it was just one big warehouse mm -hmm. and um, but this CFO now shows five spaces which is an enclosed parking space within the ambulatory it's a roll-up gate and there are there's a, uh, there's a parking indoor parking for about five white cars um, Mm, let me see if I can remember the other comments that... Uh, um, we talked about different hours on the Facebook page. Oh, yeah. Well, the, the hours that I, I, it was given to me was the hours that the, the operators gave me. I have never seen the, the Facebook, and okay, I'm not on Facebook. Okay, could you just check with them that the hours that they're giving you are it, the hours? I because why would they that? advertise different hours? That would be... Right. I don't know whether that's a season or like it was summer, winter time hours. But those were the hours that they were given to me by them. But I will okay. check with them and yeah, because I could it check. means you're advertising the patrons to come at a different time. So right, right. Oh. So that's okay. Be odd. I'll find out what the exact. And hour then there is. was a question also about the number of hanging bags shown on the drawings versus what's actually up. Uh, the hanging bags. I don't know how many we show. How many is there? But I'm pretty sure it is. It is correct, but I will double check on that. Yeah, on the plans, I think it shows something like six in a row. And but when you look at photographs, like you know, on social media or whatever, uh -huh. it looks like it's a, a lot more than just six in a row. And so what that would do would just call into question about noise and vibration and pounding, etc. Six is not as much as like twelve, and lots of you know. Well, like I mentioned, I've been there many noise. times, many hours of the day. Could and you yeah, have, just, just clarify sure. how many um, are actually hanging and whether that jives with the plan that you gave us. Okay, sure. Okay, you know what also, um, okay, so in, in terms of all of the acoustical measures that you described, can you um, do, a, do a drawing that just a shows what, a detail, that just shows what the acoustical measures are and where they're located on the plans? Um, yes, yeah, all along it, it, the, the property is roughly 95 feet deep so it's all along from the front okay. all the way to the back so just do a little key on the drawings okay. show a detail and then we know sure. okay uh, and you started the installation of the fire alarm system oh yes 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 and also the community board uh, uh, recommendation is not here it, mu it must be my fault because I didn't check that. I thought it was it would be automatically sent to to the board. It However, be. last week Rory brought it to my attention that we don't have it. I called them up. I spoke to uh, Barbara Santona, uh, which I put in my letter also. And although I do have uh, the cards signed by her that they did receive my um, my package, but she could not find any uh, documents or their. So what she told me was that. They, they have no meetings in the summer uh, time. The earliest would be September 6, uh, 26, okay. and uh, that would be the first time. And then uh, by October 26, they will be able to uh, make recommendations in their meeting. And as far as, uh, uh, there was another question here. The fire alarm system, the fire, you yes. said you're gonna need four months. Yeah, fire alarm. Uh, so we filed for that. We got it approved by fire department. We got the permit from buildings department and we have started installation. And I think for another, another month or so, it should be installed and inspected by fire department. By when? Okay. I would say another month. Okay. All right. So, so the installation will begin shortly. In other oh, it's already started. Sorry, started. Oh, it's, it's already started? About or two weeks ago. As okay. soon as we got the permit, the next so day we started the installation. Okay. So you, you think it, the installation should be complete? I would say within a month, unless there's a equipment that, uh, you know, they can't get it, that may delay. Otherwise, within a month, we should uh, complete the installation. Okay. And then fire department has to inspect okay. it and right. approve it, hopefully. Okay, so then, all right, are there any speakers on this? Are there any other questions from our side? All right, so then if you could make those um, the various changes that we discussed. Okay, so what they were is 
obviously the installation of the fire alarms, um, a, a scheduling for the fire department inspection, um, the acoustical details shown on the drawings. Um, uh, just amend your statement to say that you know you've been vis you visited there many times. There's been no complaints from the neighbors. Um, that uh, clarify the parking situation on your statement. Parking. Yeah, just describe it, clarify it. Okay. And then um, go get back to your clients about the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, and check the number of hanging bags. Back. Okay. Okay. Um, and if you could do that by, so what we could say is um, the next hearing, you come back on September 27th, and with respect to those things, those other things, not the fire department, but all the other things. Community board. Yeah, so community board, oh, they're meeting on the 27th, right? No, on the 26th, 20. but then you will not be able oh. to make any recommendations until October 26th. What's the 14th look like? It's clear. Clear. Okay. So let's do it for the 14th of October then. October. Yeah. So that'll give everybody a chance to do everything. Although I'm not going to have the recommendations on, on uh, by October 14th, but it's October 26th. I'll make your uh, for September 26th. No, September is the, the first time that they have a hearing and they could schedule. But then another month. For their, for their we can go this, with the committee Yeah, report. I was going to say, this was filed a long time yeah. ago. The community board has had ample time. Yeah, that's Come right. on, we don't I, I'm sorry. <laughs> so then why don't we just say the 27th of September, right? They have, okay. they're, supposed to just, they're supposed to bring it to a hearing within 60 days of your submission. Yeah. And it's funny, the lady who signed the, the, the receipt, the letter, is the one that says we never received it. This is Barbara the but same if, person. If you have proof of... I do service then you serve it yes. right so all right so um yeah we don't have to hold this up if, unless they had like an extreme objection um but they would know about your site already if they have an extreme objection they would call us <coughs> and say whoa yeah. right so i mean most of these pcs there's no objections from the community boards unless they're really you know terrible operators so, okay, so let's keep it for the 27th. You submit um, everything you can on September 7th. Mm -hmm. And the fire department stuff, even if you don't get it until <laughs> September 26th, <coughs> that's fine, okay? If, if you get a scheduled appointment for by September 26th for the fire alarm inspection, that's good. Okay, very good. Okay. 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 Thank you. Great, thank you. Item number four, 17015BZ, 59 Thompson Street, Manhattan. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, Commissioners, Frederick A. Becker for uh, the special permit for the spa, which has not yet opened and we're not quite sure when it's open, going to be open. The building is a mess overall. Because of the fire? The fire, no, it was a mess before the fire. <laughs> oh, um, so that's it too was, bad from an insurance uh, point of view. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just, it's Schlepping terrible. along, as they say in French. <laughs> um, You're not in a historic district. We're definitely not in a historic okay. district, yes. Uh, we found that out. And okay. there's nothing that has, they haven't put a nail on the wall yet. So there's oh, nothing, okay. nothing fire-wise. It will be properly fire-wise, et cetera. That's the end of it. Required okay. use for an established organization. Okay. Um, anybody have any additional issues? Are there any speakers on this? No. So, with that, a motion to close. Chair Perlmutter? Aye. Vice Chair Hinkson? Aye. Commissioner Montanez? Aye. Commissioner Off the Ground? Aye. And a motion to grant. Chair Perlmutter? Aye. Vice Chair Hinkson? Aye. Commissioner Montanez? Aye. Commissioner Off the Ground? Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number five, two two five fifteen BC one twenty six one thirty four east seventy eight Street Manhattan. Madam Chair, this 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 is in mind, but I think I know whose it is. Perhaps oh, I can. Yeah, they're still please. outside.
I mean, you never, you never know, but I don't think I'll be. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, Shelley Friedman, Friedman and Godbaum, representing the uh, Allen Stevenson School. <coughs> um, I know from uh, our uh, listening to uh, yesterday's executive session that you have some some questions. Uh, we have uh, and can provide the full architectural presentation if you if you want it. Um, but we do have a few people uh, to speak uh, on, on, on the matter today for you to explain the programmatic need um, and to provide some uh, statements about the, the need for these, uh, this expansion. Um, I just want to set the general stage for the application and then I'll be happy to answer your questions. The Allen Stevenson School is located at 126 through 130.